All right, we will now call the November 13th regular city council meeting to order, 6 p.m. Please rise for the invocation and pledge of allegiance. The invocation will be given by Reverend Dan Carr. May we pray. God of infinite justice and mercy, we thank you for this place we call home, Avon Park, Florida. We thank you for the beauty of this home where we live and for those who love it as we do and who show compassion and concern for those who live here and wish to make our town a jewel in Florida's crown. We thank you for the many opportunities given to serve and to care for those who live in this part of Highland County and for those who are willing to serve us and who have given this time in their lives to work in making Avon Park an even better place to live. Help those who sit in this chamber to act with character and conviction. Help them to listen with understanding and goodwill. Help them to speak with clarity and charity and restraint. Give them a renewed spirit of service and remind them that they, as we, are all stewards of your authority. Guide them to be the leaders your people need in this hour and help them to see the humanity and dignity of those who disagree with them and to treat all persons, no matter how weak or poor, with the reverence your creation deserves. And finally, by your grace, renew them with the strength of your presence and give them joy in helping to build a community worthy of those who live here. For we ask this in the confidence and goodness of your love. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Madam Clerk, if you'll please call the roll. Councilwoman Gray. Here. Councilman Spurlock. Here. Councilwoman Sutherland. Here. Sutherland. Sorry. Deputy Mayor Bernard. Mayor Anderson. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. We will now have the swearing in for the oath of office. Uh, Deputy Mayor Jim Bernard has already been sworn in at a previous date, so it'll just be me. Are you guys prepared with the oath? State of Florida. That I am duly qualified to hold office. That I am duly qualified to hold office. Under the Constitution of the state. Under the Constitution of the state. And under the Charter of the City of Avon Park. And under the char under the Charter of the City of Avon Park. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Perform the duties of mayor. Perform the duties of mayor. On which I am about to enter. Of which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Uh, Kim, there, there's also a statutory oath that has to be signed. Uh, you have the copy of those? Statutory oath? Yeah, that's the constitutional oath, but there's a statutory one having to do with payment and all that stuff. That, uh, oh, okay. I'll get that to you if you remind me. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. We did Jim's um, before he left town. We swore him in. So I'll need one for him too, Jerry. Right. Thank you. Very good. We will now appoint the deputy mayor. Uh, it's going to be my, rec my recommendation that we go back with Jim Bernard again. Is that your nomination? That's my nomination. I'll uh, second. I, yep. I um, actually don't need a second for nominations, but I just oh. want to mention that uh, I did speak to Jim about some other issues, and he did say that he was uh, very interested in, in being deputy mayor again. Okay. We need a vote for that. 
Yes. It, it, okay, now let me ask. If, if there's a you know, uh, nomination. Okay. You had something? I just was going to ask a question. Would that be for the entire term of his election or for one year or two years? Or? It's for three years, is it not? Yeah, I think it's for the three years that he's in. That he's yeah. in. But, but, you know, um, I, no, actually, I take it back. You have a, you have a, um, an administrative uh, meeting each time there's an election. So each time there's an election, it changes. So it'll, it'll be, be for two years. years. Yeah. So for two years? Yeah. Correct. Okay. Okay. So do we need a motion? Uh, if no other nominations, uh, there doesn't, you don't need a, any, uh, a vote if there's no other nominations. Close no <coughs> nominations and that's it. Okay. If there's no other nominations? Well, I'll, I'll make a suggestion that we rotate the deputy mayor. Why don't we rotate it from year to year? Well, we do every time there's an election. There's another uh, time to no change No, we don't. It. We have a nomination and a vote. I said, why don't we just rotate it like the Board of County Commissioners do? Well, it's, it's my nomination. That's why we're doing it this way. I'm nominating Jim Bernard to be the, the deputy mayor. <clears throat> For two years. Well, until, yeah, until the next election. But for two years? I thought it was for his term. It's until the next election, which is in two years, whenever you, Maria, and Councilman Spurlock come up for vote. Oh, okay. Now, because it would be unfair to somebody coming on the board, you know, not, not assuming that either one of you would lose, but, you know, in, in the <laughs> extraordinary really circumstances that that were to happen, that new person would still have the right to, to you know, yeah. be deputy mayor if they wish to be. So that's why you have an administrative meeting each time there's an election. Right. So your motion is for him to be deputy mayor for two years? Correct. Okay. And Maria second. Correct. Okay. Okay. Seeing no others, that's what it will be. No, we don't have to have a vote? No, uh, as no. I mentioned, no, it's a nomination. And so nominations don't require a second. And if there are no other nominations, there's no need for a vote because there's only one person run for office. Right. We've always motioned in the past, exactly. and it's always <laughs> been by vote. I'm just saying it, it always has been that uh, way. So I mean, if it's just going by Robert's you know, rules, of, rules of order, it's fine. But if you if that's the way you wa want to do it, and you've historically done it, I'm fine with it. If that's the way you want to do it, then you can treat it as a nomination in a second, if you wish, and vote on it. If you does, the majority want to vote. You know, I already made my second, so I would like to vote. Yeah, I'd like to vote. Okay, and we will have a vote. Madam Clerk, if you'll please call the roll. Councilmember Gray? No. Councilmember Spurlock? No. Councilmember Sutherland? Yes. M Mayor Anderson? Yes. We have a tie. The noes have it. No noes have it. So when there is a when there is a, a tie like that, when there is the noes have it, then another nomination can be made. Sure. Is I'm asking. Is yeah, that yeah absolutely. Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, I move that we rotate the deputy mayor one year at a time, um, starting with this election. Why would you do that? What's because the, what is I the point? Because I feel like that um, everybody should have an opportunity to be the deputy mayor at one time or another. I that's second that my, motion. That's just my feelings and my nomination. Yeah. Well, there is there is an opportunity every two years. I mean, this is the way that... I didn't this is the way that it's always so been. Question mine. I question whatever I'd like. Well, uh, I, I think I think yours, that so. to to go away from the history, it obviously shows that there's a reason there. I'm trying and to get to the bottom of what reason. that reason is. My reason is that I feel like that everybody up here should have the opportunity to serve as deputy mayor. I've served for deputy mayor for many many right. years, and I also felt that give somebody else the opportunity right. to do. It's always been the purview of the mayor to pick the deputy mayor. No, it has not. It has always been the, the, the council picked the deputy mayor. Well, it's confirmed by the council. No. The mayor has always given the recommendation for the deputy mayor. Well, since I've been here, <coughs> yeah. it's always it, in been either, a In either case, there, there's been a motion and a second. Okay. So. What was the second? I mean, what was the motion? Yeah, the, we rotated. The motion that it was ro that it rotates time. every year. It's starting when? Starting right now or starting, starting right now. after right this? Now. And so we're in the discussion mode right now, right? Yes. Correct. Okay. I would want um, Jim to be here only because, you know, we've had other situations where 
I felt that someone needed more time to review something and then we postponed it because we wanted five people here or we wanted more time to review, you know, documentation or contracts or stuff and I really want to stick to that premise. So, you know, he's obviously going to have to vote for himself. If you and I vote for him right now, then he would have to vote for himself and then that would win. But um, I just feel uncomfortable right now doing any type of motion with him not being here. That's just my take on it. Do we have to uh, settle this tonight or can it be postponed to the next meeting? It would be postponed to the next meeting. There, there is a procedure in the um, uh, charter if uh, both the mayor and the vice mayor are absent, or in this case, you have a mayor and you don't have a vice mayor or, or deputy mayor. Um, so um, if that were to occur, if you were to leave for some reason, then that they would have to be selected from the council, the remaining council. I see. Temporarily. Okay, so we have another meeting that is set for the 21st. 25th. Yes. 20, 21st. We have a special meeting on the 21st. Well, let's vote on whether or not we need to postpone that's this or not, other than just one word. CRA. I'm asking a question. We have a special meeting on the 21st. That's a joint meeting of the CRA. When is the meeting with the executive session? Is that not for the 21st? That's the 18th. That's the 18th. 18th. Okay. All right. So if we needed to, we could put this on the 18th. Right. Yeah, we could have the executive session and then have that as a special meeting right after. Okay. All right. Now. Your question was? I call for a point of order because she made a motion and I seconded the we were, motion. We were, we were in a discussion section and now you're wanting to put it on another meeting. Stanley, well, well, this is a discussion. Well, it, we're well, in the discussion of part of the meeting. Let's keep it there. Okay. As, as That's the exactly point, where it's at. The response to the point of order is that a motion to postpone a motion is appropriate as a secondary motion to the main motion. And, but it has to pass. Okay. It's a, it has to be seconded. It has to pass. It's called a motion to postpone. You can either have a motion to postpone definitely, which means I postpone this to the next meeting, or postpone indefinitely, which means it has to be brought up in another meeting as business. Right. So that's from Robert's Rules of Order. Okay. So is there a motion to postpone? Uh, yes, there's a motion to postpone. Indefinitely or at a specific time? At, this, at the next meeting um, that we have scheduled where all five of us will be here. Okay. I mean, that's pending, assuming, of course, that all of us will be here. Yeah. So, okay. otherwise we're in the same predicament. I second that motion. Is there a discussion on that? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilmember Gray? No. Councilmember Spurlock? No. Councilmember Sutherland? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Oh, I'm sorry, he's not here. Uh, <laughs> Mayor Anderson? <laughs> yes. So we have a tie. Right. Yeah, so the uh, motion fails for tie. Um, so where you are right now is a motion on the floor to um, nominate every other uh, or um, every every election uh, give somebody else a chance to do it it's it's every year no, is what the motion once is a year. that was my motion okay so we were already at every election which was two years and they wanted every year that's what the motion is yeah rotate the um the selection process every year so that that needs to be voted on unless there's more discussion okay let me just ask let me just make sure that that you understand what i'm saying what i what my motion is my motion is that um, each council member, seated council member, serve as uh, deputy mayor for one year at a time. How would you start that? I would start that if, like, if that motion passed tonight, so effective tonight, if, if Maria was nominated, uh, if she was done as deputy mayor, she would serve for one year. The next year, then it would be the next council person. And who decides that? Well, you can go alphabetically. You can go. It doesn't matter. Well, it's got to be part of the motion. You can't just have it. I mean, you have to spell it out. And what happens if someone doesn't want it? And let's then say they it's can decline. Turn, it. They, they can, can decline. decline. So then yeah. someone could serve two consecutive years yeah. if it was declined. That's that's fine. I understand that, but who? It's is it going to be voted on each time? I don't think it should be voted on in each time. It should be, my thought was that each council member just served one year at a time. 
And if you don't want to do it, and then it goes, it and then it goes to the next the one. The next council how? member. It goes to the next one. How? It can be alphabetically. Is that is that the roll. motion to make I it did alphabetically? I not make that in, in my motion, but I will. We can start it out that way. Well, it has to be spelled out. Okay. Because if it's going to be voted on, we basically have the exact same thing that we've always had. So what's the point? <coughs> Say what now? If it's going to be voted on each year, then we basically no. You won't vote on it each year. That's I, what I'm saying. I understand. I understand that. That's why I'm asking you to spell it out how you would like to see it done. I would like to see that each council member serve one year as deputy mayor starting tonight. For one year. But how does it go to the next person? Alphabetically. Alphabetically. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that's the motion. Yes. Is there a second on that motion? Question. Well, we need a second yes, so we sir. can have I'll a discussion. Second. We have a we have a second. Yes, sir. Now for discussion. Name and address, please. Houston F. Hall, eight twenty West Pleasant Street, Citizen of Avon Park. Yes, sir. Your question is. Somebody needs to do the math here. You can't just automatically rotate a councilman every year because of the short period between elections. It wouldn't make it through five council people. Right. True. Have we got that now. Yeah, we got that. Okay. But the, my thought was it would just go until that next person um, is no longer elected. That was, uh, did that answer It doesn't your question? make a whole lot of sense, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm trying to, I'm trying to quickly find some support for this in, in the charter or the, uh, in the code, and I'm looking quickly. Though and I'm while you're to. looking, I, I just have a, a question. Mr. Bernard, if you went alphabetically, it would be him anyway. That's correct. Right. That's so correct. being that it's alphabetical, then he would automatically be there exactly. this year. I, I, and I got that. Okay. Can I, can I make a suggestion? Sure. Um, what if we do a resolution that would start with next year's election time or, ne or the next election time, how, however you guys would choose to do it, make a resolution that that's how it's going to be done so that that's two years away. <laughs> it will, yeah, we well, could do it. Anyway. We could do it next year. You know. But if you're going to make a motion tonight, which you just did, to do it alphabetically, then it would all automatically be Jim, Jim Bernard. Jim Bernard. Right. Exactly. Right. So until then, next year. Until next year. Exactly. So, you know, and then someone else might run for office, and their last name is going to be with another B, which means that those that are on the council will never get that opportunity if that was the intent, because you could always have someone with a, a, a you know, ahead of the game. Um, alphabet alphabetized. Well, I, my thought. Go ahead, Jerry. I just want to say I'm not sure this would work, um, simply because of under 2.04, under mayor, it says a city council shall elect a deputy mayor from among its members. Mm -hmm. And okay. so that's not an election if you're going to just do it alphabetically. You're appointing somebody. You're basically saying this person automatically has done this. That's not the Oh, and that's what he said when he said when he meant say do we have to elect one each year? Yeah, that that that's the problem. The problem is you know you're um, if you if you I mean I don't see anything right now that prohibits you from changing that administrative task and making it every year you change it, you know, um, or every year you have an election. It could be the same person every year at that point, <coughs> but it's got to be an election. Okay. Um, according to your charter. And uh, That's what I, well, I think the, pr the process you, you've established there is, is really, like I said, just an appointment or an automatic um, um, insertion of somebody into that office, not an election. But um, that I think what happens in the county commissions, you, as you mentioned, I think that's, that's a um, cordial or uh, you know, a friendly um, agreement that they do. And I, I've seen it also in our county commissions, not just this one. One relinquishes their position in order to a allow the new the newbie yeah. to be chair. In line as, you know, they, mm -hmm. well, whether by alphabetically or, or seniority or however they do it, doesn't really matter. They don't do it as a fixed rule. They just do it as a courtesy. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's the way that this ought to be eventually, you know, let it be a courtesy thing or like you say, what's it cordial? You know, I'm, but just that would I'm just curious what what magic they think the uh, the deputy mayor position holds that this is such a big deal. Well, my thought is that the deputy mayor is assistance to your absence. If yeah. you're absent from the meeting, in reality, we all council members, right? Right. And and no one is no one vote outweighs anyone else's. Right. 
But my thought is that just the position alone itself, it, it allows each council member up here to experience being a deputy mayor. To experience, my thought. To experience my thought. signing checks about once a year whenever I'm not around? Well, actually, the charter says that they take the position of the mayor if the what? mayor were to resign or vacate the, the seat, and they finish off the term of the mayor. So exactly. it's more than just signing the exactly. checks. Exactly. So, I mean, that, I'm, that's I'm, just, just I'm just talking about the practicality of the yeah, everyday well. part of it. Apparently, apparently, it strikes a chord with you because you have more questions about that than... You know what? The, well, what I, is I know the magic about it? Whenever you nominated Jim and it didn't happen, it seemed like it. Maybe I read you wrong, but uh, I don't think I did. I just well, the fact that you're that you're bucking the history of Avon Park and how it's always been done, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's interesting to me that you would want to do that, because I mean, Jim's done a fantastic job as a deputy mayor. Any time that that I have been gone, he's always been you know quick to go step into that. So if someone's doing a good job with something, and historically, the mayor has always picked the deputy mayor, that's been confirmed by the council, and rarely has that ever been bucked by the council, the fact that you want to change that implies that you see a deficiency there, you see some type of a problem. And that is my question, is what is that problem, and what do you perceive to be the magic of this position that, that would need to be changed? Okay, Th Garrett. There is not a problem. There's not a problem. You perceive it to be a problem. I do We perceive just it. wanted to see a difference, and yeah, you think that's a problem know. because we want to see a difference. Okay. Well, if you don't understand what I'm saying, that's fine. I, I, just, I understood what you said. Garrett, I don't may think I you ask did. you a question? Sure. I served as your deputy mayor for many years. You did. Years Sharon you picked here. you, what, five times in a row? Yeah. Six times so in a row? I just felt that it that experience should be shared along the um the council yeah i don't see it and, that and way i i see it okay, as okay and I, that's fine garrett if you don't see it that way but that's just the way yeah. i see it the reality and, is and may I, may I this continue? is this is what you, may, you're trying may, to basically usurp what has always been done in the past may i may i continue sure okay and then um i didn't see a problem where i um when i served as your deputy mayor I don't think there was a problem. I was always willing and ready to step in whenever you exactly. were there. So, and, and you saw uh, a need to change, but that, that was okay. So uh, my thought is just why not spread the wealth amongst the council? Well, the idea is and, that and whenever, not, not that whenever, there is a a, whenever there's a new mayor, they pick a new deputy mayor. That's the point. And if they feel like that deputy mayor hasn't done a good job, then they'll pick a different one. That's the way it's always been. So it's a tradition, it what is. you're saying. It's a tradition to select the that the mayor picks the deputy mayor. Absolutely. And it's a tradition. Yep. I thought it was by vote of the rest of the we council. We voted on it, it last it year. It was. That's the way it's always been since I've been up here. It now. is. I and I, I was just simply saying that in the years that I was here, <coughs> the years that I've paid attention to the city council, the whatever the mayor has decided, the council has just cordially gone along with in this regard, on this particular item. I recall distinctly when you were selected deputy mayor, when Terry Heston got elected, he made the motion to make you deputy mayor. It wasn't the mayor who selected her, it was Terry who voted her. So I think that the tradition, yeah, might be a tradition, but in the end, it's really the council that selects. Look, I have no problem with the way the things are right now. I have no problem with it. Change is good sometimes, depending on, you know, the flavor of the council and the majority of the council. So, you know, I right now still am not comfortable making any decisions like this because he did get elected. He was deputy mayor. He has a great affinity to wanting to become de uh, deputy mayor again. So, you know, does anyone here want it other than him? I do. Okay. Well, I don't. I don't know about Stanley. I'll second that. I'll second that. I'll nominate Brenda. <laughs> so, you know, it, it comes down to that. It's like who wants it more. So, so you, you know. Yeah, so know. you want to spread it around, but yet you held it for, what, 15 years, 20 years, 15? Uh -huh. um, so you want to spread it around, and now you want it back. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. I just want to make sure everybody sees the hypocrisy there. Sure. No Kay. problem. So is there a motion to nominate her? Don't I we have a motion? Now no, we're, no, we're, we're, we're three no, motions no, deep no, now. No, no, no. We still have no, that. No, there's one. There's one, the motion to uh, rotate alphabetical. There was a, a I, mo I think that motion is dead because it's okay. a violation of your charter. Okay. Okay. I nominate so, Brenda. So <coughs> are we starting fresh with the nomination then, Jerry? You, if, if we want to make a nomination, it's, the nomination is still possible. Okay. So you made a nomination. I nominated Brenda. Is there a second? 
Second. We're going to have to have a vote on it because we've already gone down that road. So we have a motion and a second. So is there any discussion on it? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Council Member Gray? Yes. Council Member Spurlock? Yes. Council Member Sutherland? No. Mayor Anderson? No. We have a tie. No, the no's have it. Looks it's like not we a tie. Can't wait this tie without right. Mr. Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> it makes a whole lot more sense to simply wait until we have a full council. The, the irony is, is incredible. <laughs> so if there's no objections to simply waiting until we have a five member council. I have no problem. I don't have a problem we'll do. with that. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> Very good. You have that staff? All right. So on the 18th would be the Who's time, right? We'll be a special <laughs> meeting. <laughs> All right. Don't so now we have the uh, <laughs> no, I'm not. we have the assignment of committees. <laughs> but Let me find my sheet here. Given the time we spent on that, could you could you two items up? Those two items up. Sure. Before we get into the committees, there's a couple items we need to bump up. We do have some guests with us. We have the settlement agreement. We have an attorney here to represent this. Jerry, do you want to preface this? Yeah, the, um, the case, the Ayala case that uh, we were sued for um, uh, auto accident. Um, we had a mediation on that uh, yesterday and um, um, we, um, well, there was a settlement. The settlement's in your package. Um, we have somebody there here from our, um, um, the firm that represented us from the insurance company here to uh, standing for any questions. I just want to say that the uh, attorney for um, the insurance company and the insurance adjuster did, a, I think, a good job okay. representing us. I do have one question in regards to the settlement. Sure. Was this the first offer or how many offers were prior uh, to this? Please, no. please give your name and company for the record. My name is Tom Arts and I'm an attorney for Kelly Cronenberg. Um, we had, I believe, two offers prior to mediation and two counter demands. Um, I wasn't at the mediation, the partner handling the case was, and I'm sure there was and we, a series of negotiations. And we, and we um, can't talk about what happened in mediation anyway. No, so. but, but you can't talk, okay, all right. But um, I mean, this was within what we thought was a fair settlement value. Um, anything that would have gone to trial would have been much more excessive. Um, I think this was a, a, a good outcome. Okay. I agree. Okay. So we just need a motion <coughs> and, uh, um, uh, to, to approve the uh, settlement. Okay. Do you need the, um, the amount in there as well or just? Uh, it's in your package yeah. there, 675. But okay. I think it's that, you know, the whole settlement ag agreement just needs to be approved. And okay. that includes that amount. All right, do we have a motion? I make a motion that we approve the settlement agreement of $67,500. To Sala? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. The uh, the actual funds from this, is this something that's covered by the insurance company? Or yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And by the way, our, our, uh, our, our vote really is kind of perfunctory because they're the ones that pay us. Yeah. Right. But we're required to, to approve it. Okay. Sir, could you state your name again, please? Tom Arnst. That's A-R-N-S-T from Kelly Cronenberg. Okay. Thank you. Is there further questions? Yeah, this case was about two and a half, almost three years old, right? Uh, it was September 2017 is when the accident happened. Uh -huh. um, suit was filed uh, in February of this year. And so the, um, Who's paying for all the attorney's fees? Are we paying for ours and they're paying for theirs, or are we paying for theirs? No, the insurance company covers it all. All of it? Okay. But, I mean, that is us, in a sense. Uh, well, in a manner of speaking. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But it doesn't change your... Right. So I, I asked him to move this up because he's from Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, it's a long ride home. <coughs> okay. Do we have any further questions? <coughs> we have a motion and a second. Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilmember Gray? Yes. Councilmember Spurlock? Yes. Councilmember Sutherland? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Unanimous? Thank you. 
everyone. Thank you. <laughs> we also have. Uh, thank you. We also have Attorney Geert from the uh, Hounds County Sheriff's Department here representing the interlocal agreement. <coughs> Please give your uh, name and department for the record. Garrett Roberts for the Hounds County <coughs> Sheriff's Office. What you have is an interlocal agreement uh, that stemmed from section 163.01 Florida statutes that came out of the Marjorie Stone and Douglas Commission. During the commission, uh, both the commission did a study and in it, they, they realized some of the errors that occurred in the Broward County shooting, one of which was the way that the city and uh, the Broward County Sheriff's Office each had separate dispatches that did not um, connect and speak to each other. So during a time of crisis, when they needed to patch those through, it wasn't able to occur. So they mandated it through this, uh, this Florida statute that all um, essentially first responders in this time of crisis be able to have uh, dispatches that speak to each other. For us, this is purely ceremonial because we have a consolidated dispatch that dispatches all of this. So it will not change the practice uh, in which the city and the county and the fire departments, um, they, they operate, but the statute does require uh, an MOU and it does require transmittal to FDLE before the end of the year. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions on the interlocal agreement? Nope. Seeing none, entertain a motion. I move to approve the interlocal agreement as uh, directed. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. I any do have one questions? question, though. Sorry. I mean, I didn't see in the agreement any cost associated with it. The city won't have any future obligations. Uh, no, no, no ma'am. Okay. Does it assist having this to get future grants and things like that for the sheriff's department? I would say it would, it would hurt. It, we'd be violating the statute if we did not uh, get it. Uh, come to uh, have an MOU in place okay. as the statute requires that uh, requires a transmittal to FDLE. So I, I think it's just a violation of the statute. I don't know if it's tied to any grant dollars, but I'm mm -hmm. sure there would be certain consequences uh, of failing to comply with that statute. Okay. Okay, any further questions? Mm -mm. Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilmember Gray? Yes. Councilmember Spurlock? Yes. Councilmember <coughs> Sutherland? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Unanimous? Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, <coughs> back to the committees so currently uh, we have two vacancies we have planning and zoning uh, I'm on we have the uh, HRTPO which I'm also on we have the Boys and Girls Club and the Tourist Development Council which Maria is on we have the Chamber of Commerce liaison and uh, police fire pension board which Jim is on uh, the vacancies are with the Housing Authority Board and with the CRA Advisory Board. So once upon a time we had three CRA Advisory Boards, now we have a joint CRA Advisory Board. So I feel it's best to, I mean we can appoint more than one person to that. We could up have three um, technically. So is there any volunteers to uh, be appointed to that? I'll volunteer for the CRA. Do you have the housing, Maria? I had the housing. I'll volunteer for the housing. Okay. Yeah. Is there any Thank other you. any other volunteers for CRA? Like I say, there can be there can be more than one, but we do not have to have more than one. Okay, seeing none, so the CRA will be Maria. Housing Authority will be Brenda. And then for the RPAC, we have uh, Park Sutherland and uh, Danielle Phillips. Okay. Is there any opposition to that? No. Nope. Any request for changes? Seeing none, do we need, we don't need to vote on this? No. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, actually, I take that back. It's advice and consent. You've made the recommendations. They need to approve it. Okay. Motion. Is anyone willing to make a motion to approve this? Motion to approve the assignment of committees has Stated. represented by the mayor. Okay. Do we have a second? second. We have a motion and a second for the discussion. Seeing none, we'll call the roll. 
Is Stanley on anything? He is not. <laughs> he was on the Chamber of Commerce. That's what you get when you buck the deputy mayor. Is that what it is? Could be. Would you like to be on anything, Stanley? Yeah, I just, I just realized he that. He was on the Chamber of Commerce. You can uh, say it again. You can he put was on the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. And why Jim did it change? Jim was on the Chamber of Commerce. Who? Jim Bernard was on the Chamber of Commerce. Cause Not he replaced last year me. he wasn't, I was. You was? Yeah. Oh. But do you want to continue to be? Fine. I was told that Jim was on it. That's the reason why I put it. I thought there. he was as well. well. I'll lose out to him, but it don't matter. I mean, like, <laughs> do you want it, Stanley, it. or do you want you want to go with me to the CRA meetings? We'll go to CRA. Okay. So you want to be on the CRA as well? <laughs> <laughs> if I don't go, you can go. <laughs> you can be an alternate. I don't care. Yeah, that'd be an alternate. Okay. On CRA. So Stanley would be an alternate for the CRA advisory. And Stanley will be the liaison to the Chamber of Commerce. Of uh, what to the Chamber? The liaison, liaison, as you said you were last year. Well, isn't that the way it was listed last year? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want to select a um, representative for the Ridge League of Cities? I know it's not on your list, but Do we have any volunteers for the Ridge League of Cities? And what, is th what does that entail? Going, Going to Ridge League of Cities, everywhere. the dinners and all mm -hmm. that stuff? Well, in voting on behalf of the, the, the city in elections and, and, and things like that that they have. Oh, uh, I think that should be the mayor. And you, I think so, too. And you, and you, and you get to go to their <coughs> annual conference and they invite you to all these different meetings and everything. I think it should be the mayor as well. I don't really like your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> so do we need to have another motion for that? I the motion has been amended, right? Did we? No, we didn't vote, did we? We did yes, not we vote. Yes, we did. We didn't No, vote. we didn't. I thought we did. Just had a motion and a second. Are you amending your motion to encompass yes, all this I'm new Yes, I'm amending it to include Stanley Spurlock as the alternate for the CRA and also to continue him as the chamber liaison and the mayor as the Ridge League of Cities liaison. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilmember Gray? Yes. Councilmember Spurlock? Yes. <coughs> Councilmember Sutherland? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. It's unanimous. All right, that concludes all of our boards. Next up, we have the consent agenda. I have the approval of October 14, 2019 council meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve the October 14th minutes. Second. We have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilmember Gray? Yes. Councilmember Spurlock? Yes. Councilmember Sutherland? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Unanimous. Under citizens and outside agencies, we have the proclamation from Good Shepherd Hospice, Tammy Meeks. I understand we have a representative here. <laughs> Tammy, would you like to say anything? I um, just want to thank the community for supporting Good Shepherd Hospice. This we is just appreciate everything that y'all do. And this is Tammy Meeks with the Good Shepherd Hospice. Yes. Okay. Jerry, if you would read that proclamation. Okay. Did I do something else? No. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Whereas Good Shepherd Hospice provides patients and families to the highest quality care during life-limiting illness and at the end of life through pain management and symptom control, caregiver training and assistance and emotional and spiritual support, allowing patients to live fully up to the final moments surrounded by and supported by faces of loved ones, friends, and committed caregivers. Whereas last year, for nearly 4,000 area residents living in with life-limiting illness and their families received care from Good Shepherd Hospice. Whereas professional and compassionate hospice staff, including physicians, nurses, social workers, therapists, counselors, health aides, and clergy, provide comprehensive care focused on the wishes of each individual patient. Whereas nearly 300 trained volunteers contribute their time valued at $522,200 to Good Shepherd Hospice. Whereas providing high quality hospice and palliative care reaffirms our uh, belief in the essential dignity of, of every person 
uh, regardless of age, health, or social status, and that every stage of human life deserves to be treated with the utmost respect, care, and dignity. Whereas the care providers of Good Shepherd Hospice encourage all pr people to learn more about options of care and to share their wishes with family, loved ones, and their health care professionals. Whereas Good Shepherd Hospice has been a part of the Avon Park community for more than 36 years, providing compassionate hospice care to all those facing the many challenges of advanced illnesses. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Mayor Garrett Anderson, by virtue and of the authority vested in me by the Avon Park, Florida, do hereby proclaim November 2019 as National Hospice and Palliative Care Month and encourage citizens to increase their understanding and awareness of the care at the end of life and to observe this month with appropriate activities and programs <coughs> and witness whereof. I have hereunto set my hand this 13th day of November in the year of our Lord, 2019, and caused the seal to be affixed. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Did you get we, to pick that? we appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we'll, give it to, we'll give it to her. Tammy, would you like the uh, signed copy to take with you? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. And while she's coming up, do you know Good Shepherd uh, um, Hospice has always been a supportive of the veterans for the NAACP prayer, bre uh, prayer breakfast thank you, that we had last month, last Saturday. And thank you so much for your support. Thank you. Thank okay. you. All right. <clears throat> Next up, we have <coughs> an event, the Merry Christmas Toy Drive and Bide Ride. Bike Ride. Okay. All right. Uh, is this naturally propelled bike or, or motorcycle? <laughs> Spelling errors. I thought it was meant to be that way. <laughs> I'm Frankie Grover, the general manager of KISS Radio. Uh, we did the bike to school thing in the park and it turned out really great. We want to do the, uh, want to end up with the bag ride at the park this year also. And we have a food drive and tour drive October, November, and December. And then in December we ride a, a bicycle from Lakeland down here. We get down, we give away bicycles to needy kids in the community. Very good. Okay. Very good. <clears throat> and in this, uh, we are pending a million dollar liability insurance is that I, that's what i did last time i was hoping the city do it this time but i guess i got to do it again okay all right do we have any questions for frankie on this event i do are you going to have any type of sales of anything or no. is it just strictly all giveaway right all giveaways no or other organizations are going to be there soliciting we will we will have bounce houses same thing we had at, at, at the the uh, back, to, back school, to school same identical thing okay what they had was they gave um, uh, free food. I think a food vendor um, free sponsored food. the food, and um, I think it was the drive-through. Um, a pit stop. Yeah, the pit, the pit stop. Mm. Did, they brought the uh, oh, that's five hundred dollars right <laughs> <Sorry>. there. <laughs> I they, thought they I had donated it all. I'm the sorry. food, and he they had service there, and they gave away book ba backpacks. We gave away backpacks and school supplies, supplies and stuff like that. And this year they're going to be giving away. We're giving away toys food and also giving away bicycles very good yeah okay so your question to us is that you're asking what well, I was gonna say why don't y'all take care of the insurance because I'm doing everything else but I guess uh, let me just ask it anyway is that possible <laughs> <laughs> yeah is it a 501c3 no it's just, no it's not right it's a for private business yeah but all, all this stuff is free right Jerry, what say you? Obviously, it's uh, technically possible. Well, uh, it does it serve a public purpose? Is your main question. And two, the uh, as I mentioned, be I've mentioned before in the memo that um, the, um, for the Florida Auditor General likes to see you do it for 501c3s and have an agreement to make sure that the money is going to be spent in the manner in which you you have intended, mm -hmm. and so on. But if it's not a huge amount, I'm sure it's not going to be a, a huge fault. Yeah. So how do, let me ask you the question. How do we do the Jingle Bell Run? How do we do that? That's, um, 
It's not a 501c3. It's a private organization that puts that on. No, oh, it's, it's, no, it's, it's the Bill Jarrett Foundation. Huh? It's Bill Jarrett Foundation that puts that on. Are they a 501c3? I believe they are, yeah. So say, I, mean, I, I don't I can know. Look it That's up. why I'm asking, so I don't, I'm not for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty safe to say any foundation is yeah. going to be 501c3. Oh, yeah, okay. He's, uh, I'm and, they, and they provide the insurance as well, or do we provide the insurance? They do. They pro Each 501c3 provide their own insurance. Yeah, just okay. like they do at the football field and everywhere else. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's in their contracts, actually. Yeah. I mean, that's how we've we've always done it. You know? In their contracts, if they lose their 501c3 standing, then they 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 have to stop using the facilities. Yeah. Who's who? Who are you talking about? The uh, boys and girls club. Um, the, oh, uh, I'm talking about contract. We had a contract <laughs> with them. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> Avon Park football. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know. that, there you go. Uh, I remember now. So let me ask you: Are you going to have your radio there, and you're going to have the signs of your radio station? Yes, the there radio station. That. We're so, broadcasting live. Yes. Okay. So even though it is a public service, you still will be advertising for your private business. Yes. Now, the sheriff department be there all the time because they do the stuff with us all the time. So yeah. security will be there. Right. So the request is for the city to pick up your insurance and Ye for us to carry the liability. Yes. And you have bounce houses. <coughs> yes. Who's got their own insurance? Yeah, if you're going to speak, you have to come up to the He's microphone. <coughs> <coughs> This is Tracy, <coughs> Tracy Stalter. Uh, we have our own insurance. It usually plays when we go to a residence. It would always play as a secondary insurance. However, uh, the same thing would be the true if it's at the park. If they, you have initial insurance, anything over and beyond that, then our insurance picks up. So you have the bounce houses? I do. Oh, okay. If we had that as an additionally yeah. insured, would that solve the problem of coverage? Well, I think what he's saying is that his insurance company comes in after yours, which is not how we generally do the um, the agreements. It's their insurance comes in. Yeah. Our insurance doesn't come in unless they're not collectible for some reason. Right. I can verify that uh, tomorrow morning. Yeah. If you'd like the, to. The event insurance is how much for a day? It's, it's, daily, it's like eighty dollars. It's, how 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 it it's like eighty dollars. Eighty dollars or so. I mean, lot. how much yeah. is it? It's about eighty dollars. It's something. more than eighty dollars. I don't. I forgot what I paid the last time, but I can check and find out. But it's a whole lot more than eighty dollars. Yeah, mm -hmm. most five hundred one c threes carry that. Oh. I mean, I know. He's not a 501c3. No, he's not. not. Uh, yeah, but I, I don't know about the private entity. Okay. You know, uh, but it varies by the risk. I mean, if you have a bounce house, it's you a higher have, risk yeah. than if you just have people walking around. We have an event specialist here, Anne Marie. <laughs> event insurance has gone up drastically. Um, event insurance, even for one day now, is about five hundred dollars. Whoa, whoa! Yeah, it's it's not cheap. Uh, for VetJam twenty twenty, I'm looking at two thousand in insurance. So, any help with insurance is a big deal. Yeah. It really is. Okay. I, I would rather pay for the insurance for that day than carry the liability as the sole liability person. I don't know if that's something that is, you know, I'd rather it be in their name where we pay for the insurance for that day, but then it also sets a precedent for future exactly. businesses uh, to that do that. That was the point I was going to make. Yeah. Just remember that, you know, the 501c3 was the cutoff before it's simply because, right. you know, you do it for them. But if you do it for all nonprofits, then, you know, why not do it for, you know, everybody? You know, the uh, clubs that you have in town and right. things like yeah. that. Mr. Grover, do you have any other foundations or any other nonprofits that would that would partner with you on this on this venture? Well, I'm that working with a couple. Of, I'm working with Walmart now, but Walmart's not a non -profit. nonprofit. No, we have no. Uh, but we we have we don't have a nonprofit I'm working with us now. No. But if you had one, <coughs> then, then that would be suffice. Because then uh, the liability would be with them. If you have a sponsor, you know, that's uh, a 501c3 and they're request, they make the request, it's, it's easier to, to deal with at that point. Okay. Right. Yeah, we, well, this is coming up. We don't have it's, uh, any. It's December the 21st. Right. There's not a whole lot of time to fool around here. So let me ask a question. If this is approved tonight with him, um, with a 501c3 being the sponsor and providing the insurance for one day, Anna Marie, you said it costs about $500? Yes. Just about for that one day event? Okay, let me because I do know of 501c3 that was 
Anna Marie Feeney, 234 East Camphor Street, Avon Park, Florida. Yes, it averages about 500 a day, depending on what you have at the event. Uh -huh. but and the number yes. of people that you're And expecting. the number of people. So if okay. he has 500 people there, it's going to be approximately four to 500, yeah. Okay. But my suggestion would be is if he can partner with a 501c3. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, then it becomes a nonprofit event. Even if he puts up a sign, it still becomes a nonprofit event. Then maybe the council can see its way to to waiving the insurance. Yeah. There was um. A oh, we still wouldn't be waiving the insurance. We would just simply be, would be paying for the insurance. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. We don't. We don't but have that in the budget, so we'd have to. Don't we have about a thousand dollars left in that ten thousand dollar line item of? Um, yeah, I think we have about five hundred. Yeah, left, for yeah. community organizations. So, we, yeah. so there's there's money in there. Yeah, for a the little bit. Thing. Okay, yeah. So that's the only line item we have with money in it, and that's mm -hmm. that's it. That means there's no MLK parade. That means there's, no means there's nothing left, else for the rest so. of the year. Right. That, that all you know, organizations in general. This is what you budgeted for. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, and we're spending it, you know, first month in. But right. I thought we had um, uh, there was wasn't there a line item out there just that for MLK? <coughs> no, no not that used to be in the CRA advisory board meeting. But I thought in when the they when we changed it when we combined it, it was a line item. MLK for the event. Yeah, we don't do events anymore for that CRA. That was the whole premise of right. this budget. Huh? No, the MLK it comes out of the nonprofit. It's coming out item. of the nonprofit, which is that same line item. We have it all earmarked for the upcoming events except for five hundred dollars that was left. So we do have so, oh, five. There's only five hundred dollars yeah. left out of the ten thousand dollars? After what? after MLK fourth of July. Fireworks. After MLK fourth of July after, and that kind of stuff. After MLK. We have it earmarked for those things, but we do have five hundred left that we could use for insurance. So what you're saying is that the line item of MLK in the budget is not in the budget. It's just one global amount of ten thousand right. dollars, of which we've spent five thousand for the fireworks. We've spent two ad campaigns for the veterans um, uh, charities, and um, I don't know what else. And for the MLK event. So it is in there. MLK it is, is in, in there. there. Okay. It well, is. I'm, digress. I'm yeah. sorry. I thought. No, no, no. It's in there. It's we in have there. we have MLK and Fourth of July. Um, the the rest of the events that we have coming up, the city has coming up, is in that line item, and it with everything that we have coming up in there, it's used except everything's earmarked except for the last five hundred dollars of it. So, so if the insurance is over five hundred dollars, would you be willing to pick that up? You'd have to. Do I have a choice? No. Okay. <laughs> no, because yes. your cell yes. phone went off. Now <laughs> keep it in mind. All the promotion and advertising we do mention the city as a co-sponsor. Yeah. Yeah, we got that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, so, is there anyone wish, is wishing to make a motion to that effect? I don't even know what we're going to do here. Are we looking for a nonprofit to go ahead and assist with you, or are you looking as a for-profit business to get the insurance paid for by but the city? But I'm making, I'm, I'm spending money with this thing. I'm not making any money. With no, this I know, but no. the question is, because that's how the motion would be. Okay. Let me, let me, let me just say, if I know a nonprofit organization that was supposed to contact you about partnering with uh, the radio station about doing the Christmas um, thing, Christmas. Kissmas. Kissmas. Yeah. You know. So if that nonprofit could partner with you, uh -huh. then the, it, would the city be willing to possibly pay for the insurance for that one day? Up to five hundred dollars. Up to five hundred dollars, which will expand all of the ten thousand dollars that was earmarked. It's Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Wow. A lot of ifs in there. Yeah. So that's the motion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, is that a, is that a so moved? Yeah, yeah. I would I second say. that. Did you make that motion? Yes, I did. Okay, so we have a motion and we have a second, Maria. Yes. So we have a motion and a second now. So that means you are covering the insurance. Wait, wait, let me if just ask if you can get a five hundred one c three to partner with you. Okay. And, and, and then we will cover something by tomorrow. Then we will. <laughs> you know somebody. Then we'll be able to cover the insurance up to five hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. Anything beyond five hundred dollars, it's on your own. Some Not a problem. problem. Good. Good. Are we Good. also waiving the rental fee of the park? Uh, the, I would be okay with that. Yes. We're talking what? Seventy-five dollars. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, that is a part of my motion as well. Okay. Ms. Gray, I do have a question though. You know someone? Yes, okay, yes, not a problem. I just right. said that. They, not, I had, not a problem. I was slipping. Yep. Not a problem. Okay. So, so do we need a motion to forfeit? I mean, not forfeit, but to. Um, no, she said it was part of her motion. Oh, it was? Okay. I could have sworn I heard it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. All right, no. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Now, what if you don't get a 501? Then he's on his own. Okay. <laughs> Bottom line. Okay. Okay. Just trying to be clear. Okay. I mean, that's the way my understanding is that, yep. you know, we it, don't have to jump out there out of the boat. Yep, okay. it's settled. All right. Not a problem. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? We're going to have to keep it down in the audience out there, guys. If there's no further discussion, we'll call the roll. Councilmember Gray? Yes. Councilmember Spurlock? Yes. Councilmember Sutherland? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Unanimous? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. You guys have a good evening. Thank you. We sir. appreciate you. Council member discussion. Walmart water meter. Spurlock, that's you. <laughs> yeah, I was just bringing this back up at our last council meeting. I had a letter here I didn't understand. We have no material. Have what? We have no material, so you have to explain. Y'all don't have the us. material. Everybody got a copy of this at the last meeting, and you said we'll just wait till Ronnie gets here and hold on to this for the water meter. Oh. Yeah, we, we have nothing in our oh, I packet. Yeah, I didn't bring mine. Okay, you want to put it off another week? Well, if you can explain it, just explain it. Well, I'm just I'm just going to ask him the question here that uh, we replaced that meter at Walmart, and I was looking. Uh, it had a, an Avani meter on it, and we changed it to an Empire meter. And I got an equation here. Said the reason we did it was the Avanti that the Avanti meter accuracy of a four-inch me uh, four-inch meter was 1.7 gallons per minute to 880 gallons per minute, and the Empire was 0 0.004 gallons per minute to 1,000. So then. You did me an equation. Do you have this paperwork? I do. Explain that equation you did to me down there about the loss calculated at the bottom. Okay. Council members, if when you have the the existing meter that we compared it to, doesn't begin to pick up any flow until that flow registers 1.7 gallons per minute or greater. Now keep in mind this is an irrigation meter, so it's inherent it's gonna always have lower flows going through this meter. If you take 1.7 gallons per minute, well, that times 1,441 minutes in a day, you have a, a figure. Then you take that daily amount, multiply that times 30, you have a monthly total of gallons that you are not getting any revenue from and you're not accounting for. And that was around 73,000 gallons in a single month, assuming that this irrigation meter is running 24 hours a day. Do they run 24 hours a day? It's Walmart, and it's for their irrigation system. I, I mean, I'm not a spokesman for them, so I can't tell you. And again, this is a meter that's been estimated for over two years, so I don't really have a lot of historical data to know exactly how much water has been going through it in the last two years. That's for the irrigation system you're saying, right? Correct. I irrigation don't think it would run 24 center, hours so a day. It may oh, not, yeah, but I'm, I'm giving you an example of what the difference is between a meter that picks up flows at point zero zero four, yeah, I got you. at four thousandths of a gallon versus one that doesn't even begin to pick up water until after it exceeds one point seven. Mm -hmm. So there's a there's a huge difference between the accuracy between the two types of meters. So, so you're you're saying that. This this meter would pick up at 0.04. When would Walmart be that low down on the spectrum that they're only using that little amount of water? That's my question to you. I want to see the justification in changing this meter. Anytime water begins to move through it, the water column has to start pushing. I can't hear points. you, Ronnie. I'm sorry. Okay. The water has to start going past that meter at 1.7 gallons, so almost two gallons a minute has to actually pass through the existing meter before it even begins to register any flow at all. Well, don't you think they use that kind of water continually? 
Well, again, I don't know because the meter hasn't been working for two years, so we don't know exactly how much. And again, this is just to give you an idea of the difference between the two. The the meter that was on there was not working. Is that what you're telling yes, me? Yes, sir. It has not worked for two years. It's been estimated by the billing department for two year period. Wow. And that's based off of three years ago and four years ago revenues. Yes. So hmm. so really, you're, you're replacing a, a, a broken meter. We're replacing a broken meter with something that's just more it's accurate. Going to be more accurate because it picks up lower flows. Right. Industry standard is when you are informed of a meter that's broken, you should fix it within 30 days. Now, I've looked AWWA, uh, Florida Rural Water. I can't find anything in writing, but it's just an unwritten industry standard across all types of utilities, power, gas, water, and so on that when a meter is defective or broken, it should be replaced within 30 days. So here we've got a meter that hasn't been read for over two years, it's been estimated. And when we contacted Avanti, their availability was eight weeks. So then we start looking at warranty, we start looking at accuracy. So we found a meter that was much more accurate, which is a good thing on irrigation, because those flows are typically lower than a standard commercial type meter. And then we also looked at, like I said, the availability of it and the sizing and so on. And we felt this was the best use of meter in this instance. Uh, Avanti couldn't get this meter for eight weeks? Is that According what you Tim, just said? eight weeks is what he told eight us. Eight weeks. Yes, sir. I confirmed that again today. But we waited two years. We waited two years. So we weren't weeks. told about it until recently, but as soon as we were aware of it, we wanted to go ahead and get it fixed. So we were, yeah, we were sent a list of, of meters and... How many of these valves do we have? This meter? I mean, yeah, this, this, this particular meter. But the one that we just put in? Yeah. We don't have any. This is are, the first one that we any in. More, are any more on the agenda to be ordered? To be ordered? No, not at this moment. Uh, we are working with Avanti to try to give them <coughs> more lead time to get us meters in uh, for us to use. But it, we have several commercial meters that go back as far as five years. They have not been read. They have been estimated by the utility billing. So we've just been made aware of this, and we're now starting to move toward getting all these changed out. So all of these entities that have cheap water rates because their meters have not been working are going to have a big, huge water bill pretty soon. You're going to have one of two things happen. Either their water bill is going to go down because there's been a level of estimation over a number of years, or it's going to go up. There's not going to be an in-between. Okay. We do have a question. Houston? Uh, yes, Name Houston F. Hall, 820 West Pleasant Street, Avon Park. I'm a citizen. I might be able, able to shed a little light on this subject. Uh, with my familiarity, lifelong, uh, in agronomics and irrigation systems, and especially on our ridgeland soils, inevitably it is almost 100% sure uh, that meter, the irrigation system, I should say, and the, and the reading of that meter or beginning to registration of that meter at the gallonage flow, of course, that Ronnie's exemplifying, is undoubtedly on a timer switch and probably in support of the average that's been being charged them, it's probably near enough accurate according to that meter. Mm -hmm. and the way it functions uh, because in originality the aesthetics the plants the trees around Walmart have not changed other than being replaced in place we know it's our familiar familiarity with Walmart so these factors are probably exquisite enough considering all things on the averaging and when it comes to that meter coming on and off, I guarantee it's on timer and on our soils I will guarantee you that timer is set at least every two days because on our sandy soils, especially out of rainy season, you will begin to lose trees and plants because our sand percolates and evaporates because of the heat of Florida so rapidly in the sand we live on. So considering all these fa factors to finalize, I guarantee you that irrigation system is on a timer and it comes on in no less or no more, I should say, than three days. And all that other is stipulation by 
his factors in the meter, how it's registering, and when it does come on with the gallonage flow. But again, basically, I guess I'm saying and reiterating, the standard of averaging has probably been as true as that meter allows. There you go. Okay. okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Further questions, yes, sir. Ronnie, so, so you you gave consideration to Avanti f- for replacement of the uh, meter? Yes, sir. We got a quote from Avanti, too. Okay. Was the eight weeks a, a, a problem for you with that? Well, again, it wasn't just the eight-week window. We were also looking at the accuracy side of it because of the, the fact that it's an irrigation meter, and there is substantially lower flows going through it than there is a standard meter that would serve a commercial business. This is strictly for irrigation? Yes, sir. This will not affect any of the residential meters because I know that practically all of them in the city are through Avanti. Correct. Are the um, the standard for meters for residential? I know I'm di- you know diverting a little bit here. Mm-hmm. Is there any um, problem or any anticipated issue with Avanti meters? No, no, not at all. Okay. Just this one. Just this one. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And again, if we if we come across another situation where we need to get a specific meter to fit a specific opening, and this is the other thing. You have to bear in mind this was an old meter that had to be replaced and the lay length or the size of that meter did not fit that opening of the old one that had to come out do you know what kind of meter it was was it an avanti meter maria i, I don't know okay. that came out yeah Avanti. okay i wasn't here at the last meeting so i really don't know so you say that we're going to be having to replace numerous commercial meters we so when you do that, I mean, we're talking, if there's numerous, I mean, we've got a gazillion, not a gazillion, we have, you know, several hundred businesses, or I don't know, if, are you looking to replace those as well, like we have a plan for residential? Let me just comment that the AWWA does uh, consider water meters to be, uh, considered to be 10% inaccurate slow after 10 years. And so most people do um, meter change out programs at around eight years. Mm-hmm and just rotate, keep on changing them out so that they all, no, no meter is older than eight to 10 years because you're just throwing money away if you, if you do that, if you don't um, replace the meter. Larger meters obviously take more consideration. Sometimes they can be repaired. So that's a um, uh, irrigation meter you're speaking of? Or just regular? Just larger regular meters. Regular meters in general. Yeah. So going back to your question, we have 11 commercial entities that meters are broken and are currently being estimated. And those were based off of utility billing doing an estimate of That's lost revenues. This is the list that I received from utility billing. Okay. So what's the total amount of cost of these meters I, for those 11 businesses? Do you I know? don't have that tonight, Maria. Is it in excess of $5,000? Oh, yes. Each one well, then it has to go to bid. Yeah. So if you go to bid, it has to be verbal at below 10. So how do you go about finding which companies to seek it from? I mean, uh, you know, what is the procurement, Danielle Ure? I know that it's a $10,000. You have to go a written bid. If it's below that, it can be a, uh, I'm sorry, advertised bid. If it's less than 5,000, then it's verb, not verbal, but written, but opened and sealed, sealed and then opened. So if it's gonna be in excess of five, I mean, what I'm hoping is, is that you're not ordering one at a time to bypass that procurement policy. No, we policy. were only made aware of the Walmart meter initially. Since okay. then, we asked how many other meters do you have that are no longer registering? And that's when we received the list, the okay. complete list. So now that we have it, we can put a, a cost together for each one of these and then put a, a bid out for that. All of them at the together yes ma'am yeah okay. I mean that makes more sense yeah. instead of and there's a budget there was a line item for that was there not what Correct. was it like yeah, 50, 350,000 right. that was for commercial or was that just residential it's just it was everything meters. it was everything yep okay. and that's not going to cover all the meters that was just simply no, what we could get done it's a yearly thing right, right. and realistically we're probably not going to get $350,000 worth of meters done this year no right hmm. So you're going to go out to bid most likely for yes. commercial meters mm-hmm. and the specifications will be posted somewhere so that local who have local preference will be able to put in a bid for that as well as any other people sure okay so um without knowing how much it's going to be you say it's going to be more than ten thousand dollars it will have to be an advertised bid newspaper 
Okay. Anything else on the Walmart water meter? Well, are they happy with their new meter? I couldn't tell you how thick okay. it is. Are we happy with their new meter? I'm not sure we've even installed it yet. Okay. <laughs> Does anyone have anything else for Ronnie? On the mowing bid, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Item number 11, mall mowing bid. Stanley? Yeah, I, I happened to see this in the paper a couple of weeks oh. ago, and uh, it kind of alarmed me. Uh, it, there's really nothing in that. I mean, there, there's nothing in that any more than what we're doing today. And we're not improving the quality of the mall of Avon Park one bit. And um, I think it needs to extend to fertilization, pruning of trees, uh, planting of shrubs or annual, annuals, and actually the south side, maintaining the sidewalks, uh, things of that nature, and, and none, none of that's in there. Uh, well, I'm sure I wish the word I wish the word uh, uh, roundup was totally moved out of it altogether. <laughs> I think that's a bad word. <laughs> I just think it's a bad word. I mean, I just, why do you think it's a bad word? Well, it's just been so many lawsuits over yeah, well. that. You know? Of course, currently roundup is paying out a lot of money. <laughs> Houston, to I just think it's really good. Any this is Houston Foy Hall again, 820 West Pleasant Street, Avon Park. Because currently, if you've stayed abreast of the news, period, uh, Roundup is settling claims as it has in just very recent years uh, been related to and discovered the carcinogen factors of Roundup by the exposure that was a question to be a answered i know yes, the answer yes. to the question you've heard it answered. before right <laughs> yeah roundup's a bit of a nasty word to come up because they're really paying out right now uh on class action suits uh, because roundup has been directly related to cancer causing carcinogens to the applicators okay thanks sir the word roundup could be changed to herbicide look i i guess you could change it to a herbicide yeah but m I just think we need to have some discussion and maybe some committees and some professionals look into that. Look, this town's going to spend a million dollars of their taxpayer money on a multi-million dollar plant north of Avon Park. And you mean to tell me we cannot spend a little bit of money to beautify this town down downtown the mall? We it, spend it, a lot of money to, to beautify this downtown Well, yeah, we're going to spend $60,000. I mean, that's a... That's a chunk of change compared to a million dollar water line. So I have a question on that. Um, there's nothing in here that references soil amendments, fertilizing, annual pruning, or, you know, maintenance of tree, you know, the specialty stuff, the green thumb stuff. And, um, you know, we have a lot of rules I know that DOT imposes that you can't have so many, you can't have a, a tree you know, within so many feet of the right of way because it's a DOT road that 64 is, right? But we have a lot of volunteer palms that are just growing in the middle of our little bubble outs on the intersection of Lake and Main. Um, there's irrigation issues, I know, because at some point in time there was so much pressure that it was blowing off the little caps of the irrigation heads and we couldn't irrigate the sidewalks. Um, there's just been issues like that that will continue if we just have someone mowing it. You know, so what's, you know, I know that at one point the council tried to create a, a committee to do beautification, a tree here, a tree there, replace trees that have been destroyed by hurricanes and whatnot or future. Um, there's no master plan, so to speak, for treescape, landscape. And before we go out to bid, you know, we're only as good as whoever's mowing it, but if they don't have an eye to say, okay, that cinder block doesn't belong there, I'm gonna pick it up, or the potted plants that are next to the gazebo that have been sitting there for nearly two years empty on their side, whoever's mowing right now isn't picking that up. You know, it's like it's unsightly. Um, little things like that, this contract would not address that. It would just be continuously mowing. It, it, we might as well just hire two more people is what I'm getting at. Right. Um, I don't know that that's the way to go, but it just seems that if we're just going to hire people just to continue doing what we're doing, it's not going to be good enough. I, I, I do think that the mall needs dire care. If you didn't know, it used to have over 2,000 varieties of plants and shrubs. I would say probably right now it has less than 50. 
and obviously you know the weather patterns and whatnot has have caused a lot of the um, trees to not grow anymore but I mean I'd like to see and I know that there are entities in this community that would love to give us a master plan for this for our mall I know that some did that several years ago at no charge and to tell you when to fertilize when to do this when to do that when to trim when to trim uh, anything mm -hmm. but right now I don't see one single blooming plant on the mall and I know that azaleas bloom so I mean I can get into the real crux of the little nitty-gritty of the individual plants that are out there but right now we don't have anything that's growing out there that's wow and we've got a mile of it and I mean I'd rather see trees than see grass and maybe planter beds or something of azaleas and stuff that used to be there 20 we talk about traditional things we got Indian yeah. mounds all over it. well I mean, Indian mounds of mulch <laughs> all over that and stuff. those all had plants on them that have died and instead of being replaced when they died they were just removed and this replaced with mulch and I agree with you I think that that ought to be enhanced so I don't know where you are in the process of this bid I did see it in the newspaper um, we know how much is in there because we budgeted an amount of money for this I don't know if people have people submitted a bid already no so there's no one that that's, that would be a public record that they would know how much they're going to submit. So why do we not just not accept any bids until we actually have a master plan of what we want it to look like? You know, I think that we're putting the cart before the horse when we do it like this. I know it's, it's, it sounds like a, a, a quick fix, and I know that you've been directed over the past year or so. Get the mall mowed. Let's get it cleaned up. And I think that you're doing what you're asked to, mm -hmm. but I think it needs more in terms of just more detailed work. And I think the south side triangle needs the same. We still have trees out there that have lassos of lights in there that need to be removed and beautification efforts that we were trying to do for Christmas and, and all that. So I think it's all just one big plan. And well, also, um, anyway, that's my move, my move 13 up since we're talking about the, the mall. Let's talk about the trees. We've, we've taken down so many trees off the mall. We've got about 15 trees that we took down. You're Ex talking about the palms? Excluding, excluding the one that we were convinced people were doing dope behind. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, all, all up and down the mall, we've lost oaks here and there. And we don't need to go back and plant water oaks. We need to go back and plant live oaks. And I don't mean switches. Why don't, why don't we look into doing that? I mean, why don't we replace the trees that we take out when we take one out? Why don't we put one back? Yeah, I mean, the, the entire issue with all of this comes down to where's the money going to come from? Because that's the whole problem that we had during the budgeting time. And I get that, but at the same time, if we're just going to be mowing, then, you know, just mulch the whole thing. Because, I mean, what's the sense of having just mowing if you're not going to do any other level of maintenance or fertilizer? Um, I know that, you know, we have several people that now still work for the city that used to do a lot of this stuff but now have been promoted into other positions as supervisor, at least I know one, that used to do a lot of this stuff or at least hands-on. So we lost that individual to be able to have a level of control over that and now you have other workers doing other things. It would just be nice that if you hired or if we got a, co a company that it was someone that had a green thumb you know and that had the eye that if that pot is sitting there empty and it's been there for a year then pick it up and take it to the barn if there's a cinder block in the middle or a dead tree remove it you know put a yellow thing on it and just do a list and get it done um it's just the cleanup part of it i guess you know that we just don't seem to have the manpower the, no it's not the manpower it's it's the affection it's the affection you know if you don't drive down at night you don't know how many lights are out you know, if you don't really pay attention to the mall like you would your own front yard, then you're not going to really realize that. If they're just doing the basic, which is mowing, then that's just not enough. Would it strain us if we if we put the trees back on the mall? Would that strain us? I mean, well, you just have to make sure that the irrigation is there. I mean, there are, for example, there's some magnolias across the street from <sighs> the big white building. What's it called? The moose? Not the moose. Anyway, near Anoka mm -hmm. and Maine. That tree hasn't Mason. grown. That's Mason yeah, Lodge. It hasn't grown a foot since it was installed four years ago. And that's because it gets no water. And the leaves are this big. And it's not a little gem magnolia. It's a regular magnolia. It just gets no water. So, yeah. you know, and when, you know, someone driving or mowing, if they have a green thumb or, or the aptitude for, for, you know, knowing about plants and things, and I'm not an expert, I don't think it takes an expert, but if you'd mow by it every single day and you say this thing just doesn't look good or it has so much moss hanging on it, it should be removed, 
either the tree needs to be removed or the moss needs to be removed or it's sick or whatever, but it just doesn't seem like we'd have that level of care. And I don't think it takes extra money for someone to notice those things and then just have one particular work day. I know that we replace several employees with um, the uh, um, the workers, the prison workers. Prison workers. Mm -hmm. I don't see them out anymore, so I don't know. Did we lose our our, our prison workers? No, nope. nope. They, they were, were here yesterday. So they were I mean, out today. They were down central. Where were they? Were they on the mall or on twenty seven or? They were not on the mall. They've been no. working on the bridge on twenty seven, getting everything cleaned up, mowed in the median. I went to North Lake Avenue today. Yeah. So I like saying is if you had a general plan of what the mall needs and what our parks need in terms of the beautification, we only have two passive parks, the mall and the Southside Triangle. Everything else is an active park and those just get mowed. There's not really much other maintenance there other than the mowing. But if we had an active plan, a, a doable plan of, okay, instead of mowing on Friday, we're gonna fertilize. You know, magnolias get this on this time. They get certain types of soil amendments at this time of the year. I think that that knowledge would be power for the employees, and I think our mall could be something that we could really be more proud of if we had a, a little more affection devoted to its care. <clears throat> I know that we spend tens of thousands of dollars just on mall maintenance per year. It doesn't look like it. It just looks like all we do is mow, you know, and every now and then we'll trim a tree. Yeah. Can't, can't you still take and pull soil samples? And take them to oh, the you ag, should do ag pull, office yeah. and get, get the pH and whatnot. Absolutely. Soil Conservation Department. That, that's yeah. the first thing we ought to find out before we can do our fertilizer and the dolomite and whatever. And I don't know if you know this, we actually did um, uh, DNA testing on some of the dactyliferas that are on Highway 27 that ended up being removed because they carried that hideous disease that affects infects um, a lot of these big, big palms, not the sables, but, you know, mm -hmm. the dactyliferas. Basically I don't know what they're the name. Yeah. Anyway. You know that only costs like eighty dollars. I don't know what soil amend what soil samples cost, but I know that you know uh -oh. even the county might have through their um, extension agent. University of Florida does the same thing. It's just looking at the website and finding or calling someone up there, and they'll tell you where to send the soil samples, and they'll give you the results, and they'll tell you what the pH needs to be and what you need to do in order to remedy that. And that might be just the trick we need. So, but you know, replacing yeah. grass, replacing trees will do no good if we're not going to change the way the irrigation works and, and the locations yeah. where we have them, which is why we need a plan right. for the mall. We have so much more green area than just the mall that needs attention. So oh, no doubt. Every, <clears throat> every park, every baseball field, every football field, everything we've got needs professionalism. And that's something that I've asked for for years is that we had a professional that was on staff that worked these areas that knew what the heck was going on and how to take care of them. And that mean, that includes not only native trees, but includes the regular grass, that includes the ball fields, the whole nine yards. So we've got later on, you know, we've got requests for ball fields. I've been out to these ball fields and they have any number of problems that we could take care of. We could spend a month of Sundays taking care of this stuff. So we need somebody on staff that knows what the heck's going on. That's my point. We don't have a green thumb expert. We yeah. don't have anybody that knows right. any of that. Can we which hire takes, a company which to do it? Well, you can, but then if you have a company that's going to oversee all the city, how much money is that going to cost? Okay. And that's what I'm trying to get you guys to get back to. Is sooner or later, there's checks that have to be written. Volunteerism. Going to hire employees. Well, according, Volunteerism. According to the specifications of your thing here, you wanted them to mow the mall and Highway 27. What about the rest of the city? So this doesn't include anything yeah, this else. This wouldn't be for the rest of the city. Huh? Because they... Yeah. We, because you, you need to back up and understand where this came from. So where it came from, there was complaints that the mall was not being taken care of. Right? We all remember this. Mm -hmm. Right after some people took office. And I, I mall, mentioned that. I, I mentioned the done. mall had issues, right? Nothing been done. Okay. So the mall needed to be taken care of. Now, we didn't have enough staff to do that. That's what staff keeps saying, right? We don't have enough guys to take care of all the green areas that we've got. So then it arose, hey, let's hire a company to take care of what we can't get done on the mall to have a better level of service. So that's where this came from. Now you guys, what you're basically saying is that you want an even higher level of service than what this is, than over the basic, which is going to take money. Now we had an opportunity to generate more money that was shot down just at the last budget hearings, what, a few months ago. Where's the money gonna come from? Now we can have volunteers. We had, we had, we went through months, months of meetings 
with a beautification committee. We had very, we had people that wanted to volunteer. We had companies that wanted to volunteer, and that didn't work out. And maybe that can be revived. Maybe it can't. We can go down that road. But sooner or later, the council needs to understand this is going to take money. This is an extra $60,000 that was taken out of the budget for this particular thing. This has nothing to do with the, the, what was current with our employee base that was doing the work. Which was inadequate. Well, that's what your opinion is, because prior to that, we actually have more employees now than we did four years ago, and the work did get done. That's so, not true. Oh, God. Let's, you know, we, we can go down this road if you want, but I don't want to. I'm trying to look ahead. So what I am asking is, is that all we figure out is, can we talk to somebody that's going to come and give us just a layout of the mall? It doesn't, you know, in the winter time when you only mow maybe once a month, is the time that you will have this money where you will have an overflow because this is designated, I guess, to work for the entire year for, for one company for $60,000. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty heavy of a, of a price to pay. Um, I would hope that it would be less than that. But nonetheless, you know, I would be okay hiring two more people if they were told that they would never leave the mall and, and not pull them off the mall and go do something else. Second that motion. You know, yeah, because the then it defeats the entire purpose. But 60000 was set aside specifically for this. Otherwise, we could have hired two employees at the same time. So, you know, it's one or the other. And all I'm saying is, let's find the right way to go about it rather than just hiring people to go out and do the same thing that's been done in the past because that isn't working. There's no big deal in getting some plan on when to fertilize. I will volunteer to fertilize for you if that's the problem. I, I know Annie Feeney while. out there would be more than happy to go out there with me right now. Give me some rakes and some hoes and we'll go pull the moss off of two of the trees that are out there. I mean, if you want volunteers, I'll volunteer. But I, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm tired of hearing we got to raise taxes. We got, we found $100,000 in the budget that was over budgeted. And aside from that, this money right here would come out of the utility because in the end it would be those employees that work on this. So we've got plenty of money in there. So we're going to keep robbing from the utilities over and over? Well, it's, it's not it, we're not robbing it. That's exactly it's part, right. That's what's paying for this. Okay. What is paying for this? Where's the 60000 coming from? I have no idea, Maria, to tell you the truth. It's coming from the utility. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it's coming from the utility. So, Absolutely. you know, at the end of the day, the utility workers, the reason why they get pulled off the mall is because they end up going to do things for the utility. So utility is paying for this. You know, we just, like Stanley said, are spending several hundred, I don't know, million, six hundred thousand, I don't know how much for a project on the north in Polk County. That generates revenue. Right. But we're going to have to redo our, our, our sewer system or our, we have to get a $3 million loan in order to upgrade that sewer system. So are we really going to be making that money right off the bat? Absolutely. But we're still going to be spending $3 million. So, you know. To upgrade. Yeah, to upgrade. They're going to make their own To upgrade until plan. we bring more people in. I mean, that's just a bigger <coughs> thing there. But all I'm getting at is why can't we just get somebody in there um, Chad Klosser from Lake Placid, he's a, a landscape architect. We've got several landscape um, people here in town. I know that Mr. Crossan at one point was thrilled to be providing a free, at the time, um, layout of what you can do with the, with the mall. You've got two <coughs> garden clubs that know everything about plants that you could ever, that you've got the extension agent down in the, for the county from the University of Florida as well. If you want me to bring someone for you from the University of Florida, I can do that. I will pay for that person to come down myself and put them up at the Jacaranda. Tell me what you need in order so that we can get this looking better. And I don't want to keep on hearing excuses that we don't have the money. It doesn't take a lot of money to put fertilizer down. It just doesn't. And if you want to keep paying for something to look the way it does, then we're really spinning our wheels. I just don't see how you enjoy looking at it. It's our crown jewel. It's our lure to our town, and you I know, don't. It's it's been shameful for over a decade. Well, then let's do something about it. It's the basis. For Boy, if you're going to comment, you got to come up to the podium. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> Maintenance clauses in your bidding, simple, Jerry. Really, identify what you want in your bidding and have maintenance clauses. Nothing is going to grow and be vivacious if there's not maintenance to it. That's the way it is. That's nature, and nature knows no mercy. Got it. Now, 
In addition, I'm Houston F. Hall, 820 West Pleasant Street, Avon Park, a citizen. We got it. Something is not filtering through here. There has been, for four and a half or five months now, a proposed Bismarck Palm Supremacy Project that will put us so far ahead of every existing township in Central Florida with palms, the overwhelming palm theme of Florida and California, which has been promoted by the state with the Sylvester Palm, Date Palm, and they didn't have a horticulturist as vice. It is a desert palm that's been brought to a tropical environment. Simple as that. Any farmer figure that out. The palm yellow budding disease is wiping them out because of that. And I've been given to understand, not read succinctly, that there are regulations or clauses in the state share cost funding on beautification projects that list exquisitely the Sylvester State, the Sylvester Date Palm. If you even travel around Orlando, you will see that palm exhibited on the big concrete monolithic slabs on the bulkheads of the overpasses even, glyphs. This is how much that's been promoted. And it is a major failure. Okay. <coughs> the Bismarck Palm in the botanical world is the gigantrous. They are a tropical palm yep. that I have significant immunities against a majority of tropical ailments, diseases, and disorders of palms. Okay. The silver palm, it's also called. Okay. Lake Placid has a few of them. You'll see a few of them around. Residents seem to be wiser. People with a little money are buying them. They are relatively expensive. They are much cheaper or have been than the state designated Sylvester Date Palm, which oh. landowners got on the bandwagon and way overplanted supply and demand, <coughs> and the bottom fell out of the market. And then, with less maintenance of their palm farms, immediately the yellow palm budding disease wiped out those acreages. Okay. You got to spray them, you got to keep spraying them, and even that is not a solid defensive. All right. Now, there you go. The CRA has been packing an advisory of some four or five pages that I turned in to Galen Thomas, and I'm not complaining about Galen. That, that lady has stood toe to toe with past councils here on the lack or lacking element of people not understanding or having the aesthetic, that's not ascetic, aesthetic, A-E-S-T-H-E-T-I-C, aesthetic, nature. But you know who does? People who have and desire that aestheticness tend to have money because it goes along with intellect. And a project of this sort is, well, there's a roughly estimated $85,000 laid out with counts of palms. The palms sitting at 820 on the public right of way right now are the surprise palms in that plan. Okay. I'm it's a good one. It's a solid one. Now, again, where's the money going to come from? I feel quite sure that Galen is probably currently incorporating that plan somehow into what I understand she is working on a major mall improvement CRA She's budgeting. resigned from the CRA, by the way, so I but don't think she's working on it anymore. Well, no surprise. After some 12 years of battling, I, I don't she's know. finally I, given yeah, up I, unless it's just her health and it's none of our business. It, it is health-related issues. It's ruthless. It's ruthless. <laughs> anyway, so getting back to this. I have do one we, more approach. I'll make that. Thank you. Do, do we need I'm to make a motion for you? To, I mean, I know that you went to bid based off of the budget and stuff, but can we just put a little hold on that until we get just a master plan for the mall? It's the winter time. Everything's going to be quasi dormant. So we have a little bit of time to be able to figure out what we're going to do. So if it's okay with the council, I mean, I, I don't see how it would be any extra expense just to see if we can get somebody 
out there to give us an idea of what we can do with the maintenance, not just cutting, but also in yeah. growing. I, I agree with that 100%, but the trees we took down, why can't we replace those trees? Well, why you're talking about the exact location? Yeah, put them right back where we cut them down from. I mean. Around the gazebo? No, 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 no. Not talking about those. We've taken down 13 oaks up and down the mall. They were water oaks. Yeah. We need to go back with live oaks, and there's three golden rain trees took down in front of the uh, community center. Just why, why would over speak you, Stanley? But there's three uh, replacements. Sir, boy, boy, you can't do it. If you're going to make comment, you got to be at the microphone. You've already commented twice on this agenda. This is the last time. There's three trees potted sitting with those palms on the public right of way in front of 820 West Pleasant. Totally donated to the citizens, not to cost them one dime. I will even plant them personally. Okay. All right, we take and the biggest problem that has been with our cabbage palms, when you see them dying out now, a few of them do have the yellow palm budding disease. The cabbage palm happens to be very resilient okay, to that. Okay, well, we get it on the palms. Air pockets were left under them during the planting because they were not planted property or there was injury Boy. to them in the harvest. When those air pockets, when those trees are Boy, not mudded in properly, there's a void left that drought will kill them. Where's that? It's enough. Hey, that's good right there. We have another question. Sir, name and address, please. Tracy Stalter, 40, uh, 4213 East Old Bombing Range Road. Is there any harm in putting out stipulations in the paper or whatever for bids, bringing the bids in, and seeing what you have the only the only downside to that is that, that if we open them then everybody's going to be able to see them so but if we go out for another round of bidding everybody's going to know what the previous people bid i think that what the train of thought that i have and i don't know if the council would be agreeable to it or not if we get a, a plan of what we need for the mall <coughs> then we incorporate that into a new bid. absolutely rather than doing this bid as is because everyone's if it continues and someone's going to submit 50 40 whatever then everyone's going to know what that is and then they're all going to be feeding off of one another and trying to undercut someone else and i think that that would be just sad and it would be you know i wouldn't want that for a local business you know oh we went to bid and then we pulled it up from underneath them i don't want to do that so if we have a master plan 10 malls rather than 21 malls maybe just the gazebo mall if that's all we can afford but at least we'll have a master plan for all of it and you know in the meantime we can start getting the irrigation ready and stuff but we can plan for where the trees would go and if there's an existing dead one then we know to replace it i personally don't want to replace any oak that's out there right now let them die on their own you know I and i let any oak die on its own i don't feel like taking anything out just to replace it with a fresh one but you know some trees are super expensive other ones are not maybe well, we can get some donated you know but I know that if once you put the bids out there, the companies will probably throw in the design just to get the bid or just to get in the door to get the well, bid. Well, but then we don't have anything in here that talks about design. You know. No, I understand yeah. that, and that's what I'm saying. You know, and that yes, you are correct though that if we did have an idea where we want to put things, regardless of what passive park we have, then you know we would say we want to put you know trees there and then that person would be able to come back and say okay this is what you need or, or however we want to go about it but you won't be able to have a successful tree unless you have a decent fertilizer and water i don't care how many people say some things are native you still have a watering in period of a year well the we other thing is you was talking about fire beds and stuff like that fire bed maintenance is more than grass cutting maintenance oh sure so i mean to run a mower over something it's you know, yeah but then you the can deal. also do the uh, peanut uh, the county put it down in the middle of the median on Highway 27, out there by Walmart, and all they do is mow it, and it blooms. So, I mean, there are some plants that don't need any maintenance other than water. All you do is just mow them down. You can put some other kind of ground cover that not necessarily has to be an annual or a perennial. We'll use that in specialty locations, you know, in front of City Hall or the Four Corners or something. But there are other blooming flowers. But right now, I haven't seen a blooming plant on the mall in two years. And I know you've talked about you had committees and stuff like that, but sometimes you go back to your, your citizens, you'll find yes. somebody that can do yeah. it. Yeah, we do have two garden clubs. There's a Founders Garden Club and the Avon Park Garden Club. I can get you the numbers for both of them. Please. But as far as the trees go, Maria, years ago, there was a concerted effort to put the trees here. I remember yeah. when Albritton and all those people put those trees out. And those water oaks that they brought in, 
they got eat up with ball moss, not not southern moss. I mean, just ball moss, and nobody did nothing about it. Nothing, did, nothing happened. Well, and, and all some those of them trees got, were sapped yeah. and killed. And, yeah. and why would you would you not be in in favor of replacing those trees today? Oh no, replacing ones that are no longer there. Right. Absolutely, right. that's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. No, that's why don't perfectly we do fine. That? Because we do have about twelve that have been taken out. And those three rain trees in front of the community center. Why don't we replace those trees? Those were Drake elms. Is that what they were? Drake okay. elms. So, but they need water, and they don't need any care whatsoever. But there'd be less to mow. I make a know. motion that we do replace those trees. Do we have irrigation? Well, we. Sure. Sure. We have a motion. Is there a second? Dies for lack of second. Do we have irrigation in those spots? What I, you know, Stanley, and just. We have to have irrigation. I mean, you can make a motion all day irrigation. long, but it makes no good sense if you don't have a way to maintain it. That's that's a cop out. The malls had irrigation ever since John Ziegler and Bobby Sizemore. Was it but has it, and it's the, layer of the upon best layer course of action us. is to yeah. simply that's okay. have. That's okay. The best that's course right. of action is to get a master plan. I'm done. Yeah, master plan and make sure that the irrigation is adequate for wherever we want to put these new trees. I'm right. Done. It's going to encompass trees, going to encompass plants, the whole nine yards. So the question is this master plan, where's it gonna come from? So are we just gonna put out something and ask for people to give us plans or what? No, I think that what we can do is contact the several businesses that we have and see whether or not they would like to volunteer. There's no guarantee that they would get the work, but if they were willing to do that, we do have some local residents that probably would. And if they are willing to do so, then we accept you know, their, their ideas. We also have two garden clubs. We can re reach out to them. We don't have to form a committee. I do recall Galen uh, and I believe John Barbin talking about um, a master floral plan that was put out probably 10 years ago. Yes, I did it. You and did it, it never got done. Uh, but do you still have it? Is that something city It's up at City Hall somewhere. And I is that know. sufficient? That would have been sufficient. It was for a grant. Mm -hmm. So why could we not just copy that or If you maybe can find it. Okay. You don't have a copy of it? I, don't, like I didn't keep a copy of it, no. Okay. Florida Highway Beautification Council grant. Because that's already done. And obviously we could tone it down if need be. Right, but all that was was um, the Florida Highway Beautification Council looking at it and saying this is good. And they have actually use that as a template for other grants in the, in the state. So I know that if you can't get one at City Hall, you can call um, District 1 DOT and talk to someone in there about the FHBC grants. And they'll refer you to someone. I, don't, I forgot the guy's name, but they should have copies of, of those types of grants there. There's also forestry grants as well. But, okay. you know, we don't have a grant writer. So for the time being, we're going to pull this bid. Mm -hmm. Is that agreed? Yes. And if all possible, there are areas that trees can be replaced where there is water. I'm then done. let's replace them. I'm done. God, <laughs> Stanley. I'm done. That's crazy. <laughs> we do nothing. Once again, this, this council does nothing. Well, we're trying family. to get this taken sure. care of. It's got to be done the right way. Houston yeah. F. Hall, 820 right. West Boy. Pleasant Street, that, no. a citizen. You're done. The three spots that Stanley just mentioned Boy. would be an excellent spot the for three super okay. Bismarcks. And Boy, again, a project that will put us way into the future. That's enough. We have a deputy on the way that I promise you will escort you out if you don't stop. Well, okay, can I take my time when I'm on the screen before? Because I'm nope. going to stop. You, you do not have permission to approach. You do not have permission to approach. Even, did I say again, that topic? At the end of the meeting, yes, you do. At the end of the meeting. Okay. Well, I, I want to get out of here if you want to have me arrested. Are you, are you, are you, are you going to Are you gonna stay quiet? I've never done that. <laughs> when did I do that? All right. Way too late. <laughs> Moving on. So oh, we're pulling this you bid. You're harassing me. No, I was All right, later. we're done with it. We're moving on. That's enough. We're going to pull the bid. We're going to ask those organizations for a plan. Is there anything else on this item? One other I'm thing. Done. Can you can you please add into um, your next bid uh, the south side cleanup as well somewhere because the, what I've noticed and I talked to the city manager, the interim city manager. The streets um, on Delaney and Hell Mike Ray grass is growing in the roads, in the road itself. So. Okay. All right. So that was item number eleven. Item number twelve: dumpsters in the Soto area. 
Let's see well, you again. I, I have asked and asked to pull those dumpsters. And last, uh, last week I just decided I'd show you why I was doing that. And all the council has a picture of that. And um, I was told at the last meeting we picked that garbage up five times a week. And I talked to Ronnie. He said, we don't even run garbage five days a week. So I'm asking with the exception of the dumpster that's by the uh, Heartland National well, Bank, pick up all them other dumpsters and give them people cans. You can see how it's working for us. Just look at the pictures. Clean these up, pick them up, and put no dumping signs. I did get a um, phone call from Dora Smith yesterday about that. She said that she thinks it's getting better over there, but it looks it. Um, I, I, she said that um, there's illegal dumping going on over there, so people are dumping stuff that don't live there. Um, I asked her if they were the owners or the landlords there and she said no that it was owned by multiple people and um, that the problem is illegal dumping now whether that's true or not i don't know but who I'm pays for the dumpster she does the, the uh they say she said that multiple people that own the different units pay for the dumpsters so right. let me there, there's but, a total but the bill's got to go to somebody go ahead there's a total of 63 units there that pay the 15 dollars per unit um, when you add up those 63 units, you get a uh, revenue of $945. A month? A month. And so we what have two dumpsters there at five days, of, uh, five day, five day a week pickup out of four yards. Um, that's equivalent to 30650 for one dumpster. So we have more than enough revenue to increase if that's what you, if we need to increase to accommodate the trash that's overflowing or I, 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 this is my point I'm trying to be reasonable about this. I, I don't <coughs> care how many times this is what we got right here this, this is what we got in our city I don't care about the money part of it just just look at what it's doing for our city can you see somebody driving through Avon Park that might want to locate a business or move here and see something like that on a Monday morning can you see that Stanley do you think that having the dumpsters um, dumped more often would help. No, I, I, I how, she's already tell me. Just did you say we did it five, five times, times a now. week? Yeah, Ronnie, you said we didn't even pick it up, but four times a week. The, the funny load for the dumpster is five days a week, Stanley. I'm sorry, I told you wrong because I'm, I'm used okay. to our guys Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday picking up garbage. But I think if everybody had a can by their house, they would put the garbage in the can and bring it to the road a lot better than sending a kid down there to throw it beside the dumpster. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I think that she's got wind, and this is just my opinion, and I talk a lot more than I should. She's got wind that we may pick those dumpsters up, and, and that's her reasoning. And I'm not saying some of that don't go on, but that's against the law. I think the city attorney will tell you that. Yeah. That's against the law. Yeah, the trouble, the trouble is trying to assign uh you know blame to the individuals who are potentially doing this mm -hmm. so but aren't, aren't we told all the time that if someone dumps illegally on your yard it's your responsibility to clean it up but this I mean, is in this the right away problem. this That's is on the right away and we're creating them to so, do it because we give them a place to dump it. right you've only got a couple of options you can do individual garbage cans with individual apartments and then whenever there's trash on or around that individual can then of course you the code enforcement could find that individual apartment owner that's one way to do it you could set up cameras to try to watch these dumpsters which would be an expense then you'd have to identify it Danielle did this you say that there's more money than what they're getting in terms of what they're paying I mean, I'm sorry that that there's less dumpsters based off of what if they had garbage cans versus dumpsters are we getting more money out of these tenants and not giving them enough dumpster? Correct. So Whoa. it would be to their advantage if they had a, a can. Yeah. And um, how, how much paying for, right? How much so, difference was it? Uh, you're looking roughly two to three hundred dollars per month. Yeah. Uh, no, for that we get extra per month. Per month. Yeah. So, okay. What if? Because it seems to me that the biggest issue is that this trash goes everywhere, right? So there has to be some level of pickup. So what if there was more pickup 
from the actual city driver and making sure for the dumpsters or the garbage cans for the dumpsters you can increase it well you mean that this the city yeah. picks up the stuff right that's as around in if the it. trash is next to the dumpster the city okay. picks it up council not more times but more do, do you see that first picture i Look do at that dumpster right the dumpster is empty totally, there's totally trash empty. all the way around it yeah that's right i went there monday morning and i actually went in that white garbage bag to the left <laughs> That's a Miss Ruiz that lives there because I got a prescription, empty prescription <laughs> bottle out of there. Yeah. Go I got it. I didn't tell you the first name, so I'm not messing up with any pertinent medical information. But <laughs> it's, it's on a right away. It's already a public thing. I don't, I don't know if they live there or not, but. That's, who, that's where it came from. So, and, and that's not the question. As long as those dumpsters exist, you're going to have that garbage because the people don't care. Well, I they don't send them kids down there, and that's what's going on. Keep it down in the audience out there. We have to have a way of finding the property owners. Yeah, there has to be can. some type of a ramification. Well, Give what would happen if you just removed, if the dumpsters are on the right-of-way? Mm -hmm. Since when do we put dumpsters on right-of-ways? I thought they had to go on private property. So why are we even having a dumpster on a right-of-way? To me, that needs to be removed and they need to have garbage cans or the owner has to find a place within their property to put the garbage inside their property. I bet it would get cleaned up if it was in their property. Inside of an enclosure. An enclosure. But I mean, an enclosure on city right-of-way would mean that anyone can have a garbage or a dumpster on the right-of-way. Right. And that it would be, the, the, it would the, be the, problem, the neighborhood dump site. This is not a complex owned by one person. That's no, the, I know that. But, but they're all paying for that one dumpster on the city's right-of-way, and it's our right-of-way, not mm -hmm. theirs. It's the city's. So we have to maintain it. We have to clean it up. We're the ones that have to discuss how nasty it is. But they're the ones that are responsible for it because they're the ones that are paying for it but how is how does that differ from a a garbage can sitting in that same spot oh uh, the garbage can no. would be per the resident and the resident would have to wheel it out and then they'd have to wheel it in right but what i'm saying is if there's garbage sitting next to the garbage can what happens then it becomes an illegal dump site but still which differs from this how you're supposed to bring yours off the that's, that's yeah what I'm getting but at. That, that means we don't do anything right we don't i don't want to do we nothing. need to, we need to figure out a way to be able to to find them for that that's what i'm trying to get at okay but there there again we're going to end up spending six months of some investigative thing and trying I'm to figure out who that. did it it ends up being one person maybe maybe not it's dark you won't get nice. a good grainy picture or whatever the bottom line is is that they're abusing city right away by dumping their stuff there and the tenant the landlords are allowing it because right. they're not setting standards for the tenants in there they are yeah right so either if you say we can't find them why can't you find the individuals that are paying for the dumpster equally that, can we you can't you, I mean, you, if you don't know who's actually causing the problem you can't find then get rid person. of the dumpster so that people yeah. can't yeah. dump their I, junk no, out that's there. that's fine will I mean, you I, allow me to make a motion you can make a motion anytime. I'll make a motion that we pick the dumpsters up and give them individual cans. I'll second that. Would those individual cans have different apartment numbers on them so that we I would know think, whose is whose? I would think so. They're paying for it. Yeah, but one of them's going to have a number assigned to them. It's going to have just a like all the, the rest of the residents. I assume you're not going to let them put them disappear. at the same place because you'll end up no. in the same thing. No. They have to put it by their unit, I would imagine. That's so. where the garbage cans go now. Obviously, we have a motion and a second, so we're in discussion. <laughs> discussing yep so these cans will have to be wheeled back to their individual apartments mm -hmm. correct and and if they're left out overnight um that's a code enforcement that's issue. a code a code violation yeah okay okay, okay. i don't have a problem with that what is the time frame do you have to give a notice that you're getting the dumpster or can you just go there and pick it up and then they're not going to have anything i mean is there a time because we've got so many that we're going to have to provide these trash toters to we're going to have to order them so there's going to be a little bit of a delay in us getting them. So we will use that to notify the property owners of this change. Can you use the recycle bins in the yeah. meantime, since we have a plethora of those and just say these are your new garbage cans and they're all color coded, therefore they're yours? The recycle bins have been sold to someone else. They've all been picked up and sold. All of them haven't been picked up. There are several on the south side still. Right, yeah, but if they're not on the right of way, I can't them. pick them up. That's our problem. I mean, I can't, I can't spare somebody to just ride through the city constantly waiting on somebody to roll one out on a particular day and time. 
Well, I think that if we do this with this property here, it also sends a message to all the other locations that have dumpsters because there are other locations in town that have something yes. similar to this. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that at some point, perhaps the city said, okay, we're going to give you a dumpster to make it convenient so that you don't have all these 64 soldiers sitting out there. Right. But at this point, they're not doing their part. And at the end of the day, the landlords are allowing this because they're not setting any standards or rules. And this thing about illegal dumping, where's the police uh, claim that there's illegal dumping there? Has there been any complaint from the landowners? Oh, someone's illegally dumping? No, it's Stanley driving by it. So, you know, they're not taking responsibility for it. So maybe... Well, nobody's going to complain unless there's some type of a fine assessed. How, how often will the um, cans be emptied? Twice the same time that everyone else gets theirs emptied. Mm -hmm. Twice a week. Twice a week. Okay. okay. Any further discussion on it? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilmember Gray? Yes. Councilmember Spurlock? Yes. Councilmember Sutherland? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Unanimous. Okay. Item number 13, well, trees on the mall, is that uh, sure sufficient with the, okay. Staff updates, item number 14, Avon Park Youth Football Financial Renovation Assistance, Kim Gay. You've based on. Okay. And it's What's that? Yep. Item number 14. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Robert and I uh, met a, a couple of the gentlemen over at the Durham, uh, Durham Martin <coughs> Baseball Complex. And uh, we're looking at some of the things that they've done. They've done some painting over there. Um, the concession stand, the outside of it, we, we didn't get to go inside, but the outside looked really good. Um, they're doing a lot of work over there, and there's some other things that they need, that they need done. Um, there's some things at the bottom of this list that are high dollar items that they're not looking for right now. They're willing to wait for maybe an RPAC, you know, in, in, in a year or something. But there are some things that they are asking the city to help them with. Um, that need to be done to bring the um, complex up to par where it needs to be. Um, they've already spent a bunch of money and time on some paint. There's, um, as you can see on the list, there's electrical work that needs to be done. With the roll-up door um, for the equipment room, they were showing that to us, and they can't open that. So um, there's a few different things that, that really, really need to be done. And they're here right now. Um, they're present to talk to you and see if you have any questions or, or comments that you want to address with them. So what are they asking? Mr. Pritchett. Them? They're asking for um, financial assistance from the, from the city to help them bring the ballpark up to where it needs to be. What, what, what amount? What, what are they looking for? It's well, on the all list. All of this at the, on the second page here? As much. No, just I have on. Um, yeah, and I'll let I'll let him explain it to you. The same, same as this one we got, right? Uh, so they need they need countertops and stuff that had to. Is it, did we have out. anything in our budget for this? That's what we need to talk about. If there's anywhere that we can get the money from, we'll have to talk to Danielle about it and stuff too. But if the council is. Wait a minute. Help them with some <laughs> there was something. Hold on. We just can't because um, there was some issues at the uh, Martin Luther King complex that was brought up during the budget period. Okay. That I don't think was addressed. Okay. So I, why are we? Well, they're just asking, and I mean, it's not. You don't have to. You know, I understand that, right. but if it wasn't budgeted in our budget for this, and I did, I did mention that when we're out there that you know we didn't. We didn't have it in the budget. So. Well, you better start selling some barbecue dinners. Well, I recall <laughs> before we go on, there was 75000 budgeted for the remodeling of a office space at Public Works that's not going to cost seventy five, and it was admitted to that during our budget meeting. So there's about, okay, there's money there, but I, they haven't started their remodeling. Yeah. Different what? fund. Different fund? Oh, yeah. That's a utility yeah. fund? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Okay. And they're still not going to spend all of that anyway. But you have right now for general maintenance repairs for Dura Martin of uh, thirty one hundred, and that's just a recurring, yes, fund, right? 
That's just your general general maintenance. As for us going out there, fixing some minor thing, or um, if we have uh, river greens go out and do some repairs, some some comes out of that as well. So what has been allocated for, for example, Lucy Dirkman? Because they're they're not even do they even have an active softball? I don't think they're so. not active right now. Th this is Chad Dolk. Pritchett that lives at. Seven hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, Chad Pritchett, oh. fifteen fifteen, Isis Lake Drive, Avon Andrew. Park. Um, you know, actually, we we came to the council, or we came to the city manager earlier in the year. There's obviously been some turnover. Um, had talked to David, had talked to Rick Helms, Garrett's been out there. Um, spoke to Jim Menard, spoke to Maria, all on an individual basis. Um, these are not. I mean, these are. Uh, this is a city complex. Um, it's for everyone in the city. It's a city league's been around for 50, 60 years. Actually, I was going to name the folks that are on the board, and it's funny that every single person on the board, uh, other than Susan Roberts, that I know of, has, has played there, grew up in this community, and li still lives in this community. Uh, Mike Pollitt's the president. Jared Cloud's the vice president. Uh, Susan Roberts is the treasurer. And ma'am, you'll you'll have to she may have speak at the too. podium. <laughs> Please give your name and address. Susan Roberts, 28, <laughs> 2834 Palo Verde Drive, Avon Park. Um, I hadn't played on the fields, but those fields are very near and dear to my heart because Dura Martin was my grandfather. And I would like to see them maintained because they're in horrible condition. You know, I would like to make a comment here. We don't have a recreation department, and to me, the moms and dads and the community people that run these programs for us, us are they are our default recreation department. And um, the same thing on the south side, we have different ball clubs down there as well as basketball and we have other nonprofits and you know everyone gets to use the fields and we maintain all these fields. When I spoke to Richard, he said that all of the labor they were doing and there's something to be said about that as well. Pretty much the ball, pretty much everything out there has been done by volunteers, and correct, it comes and correct. goes We're, depending on who's on the teams and which moms and dads can afford it or rally up the forces to get the money to do that. I think it's really important to continue our recreation default program. Um, if Avon Park baseball, I'm sorry, softball isn't using their field um, and we're just doing basic maintenance there, that's just continuous that we're not going to be using any extra money. I'd say reallocate those dollars to Dura Martin if it's available. You know, but for any other field that doesn't have any dire needs, um, I know you guys bring in a lot of people. They go to McDonald's, they spend the night in the hotels here and stuff, so they have an economic yeah. development factor that contributes to this. And I'm in 100% support of them getting whatever funding that we can give them to do this. Because, by the way, if they're volunteering to do this, that's less work that our employees have to do, right. particularly because, you know, it's their name on it. So, you know, I know you guys advertise a lot and you've got a budget for that. I don't know what your revenues are. Well, you know, we, we're basically, we bring in enough money to cover the cost of the league. Obviously, there's a city complex. We use those facilities um, that are provided to us. This is not a new um, scenario. I mean, we would love to partner with the city and, you know, some sort of maintenance um, agreement uh, we there there is a, a long-standing agreement the city's supposed to maintain the field spray water mow and stuff like that to to a certain extent it happens but it probably doesn't happen to the level of what it needs to and, and I'd be more than happy to take anyone down there meet anyone down there show them the facilities and you make your own judgment as to whether it's uh, up to par or not um, so you know go ahead I'm sorry go ahead. I, I just want to make it clear I'm not against um, yep. the, the maintenance of the uh, the field I just want to make sure that we spend the money that we allocated for for that you I know get it. I additional get it. funds is what I'm concerned about I get it know? this this actually you know came up prior to budgeting I think there was some money there last year or not really well, I guess you say last year's budget because it was earlier this year yeah. and through conversation with uh, Mr. Flowers and Mr. Helms it was there and it was real close to happening because I think it was within the uh, authority of the city manager at that point you know dollars and cents wise that he could have <laughs> just made the decision to move on and then we had a little uh, you know personnel changeover so I don't really have any way to and I, yeah. I've invited Miss uh, the current city manager out there, and she was glad to come. And, and I feel like she even had the authority, but she was maybe concerned about overstepping her bounds. So we're just asking for materials, and we, we've got the labor. Some of the labor we've already provided, um, 
and we just like to recoup the cost of that because again we're just a small recoup the, 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 the problem I have, have the so problem they, they have I have receipts. is is I go right back to to where it was back at to the budget I just have a problem with everything ending in even dollars even dollars these, all the, the way the, these, down listen, the listen, down listen, these are estimates we will provide you a receipt for every single we're not asking for a check for 10 grand we'll get we'll do the work and provide you a receipt you just reimburse for the expense of the material and they'll say home depot on it i mean it's not this is not a joke it's not a it's not a, a made up figure these are actual you know they will be actual numbers and if we don't spend it we won't get it just yeah. as simple as that. And I'm not, I'm not here speaking for Chad. I'm not even the one doing the work. I've got three got young you. boys, and I'm speaking for the community. And if you don't want to do it, then that's your decision to make that decision. You know, say, I don't want to do this for the community. But when you look around, I think you'd be a lot smarter to invest in your youth than rehabilitate your young adults. And you just see where you want to spend your money, time, and effort. Yeah. Do, you want, do you want your facilities to look that way? If you do, I guess we'll all just live here and enjoy it. I'd really, like to keep things safe out there. I mean, I see that you have electrical work, and it yeah. used to be that someone from the city would go in there and work on the electrical. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know, do we have an electrician on staff? Robert. Robert, Robert is our electrician. Can yeah. he go in there? Hmm? Graham is our electrician. We have another? We have two electricians? Robert. Yeah. Robert. Robert Graham does electrical work um, or has in the past. I don't know that he's licensed or not, but Graham is the one that does ours. And he's licensed? Yeah. Yes. There you go. Okay. Robert so moved to a supervisor position. That's why he's no longer the city electrician. He can still right. do electrical work. And, and he's aware of this. I've met him out there. But it, it, the fact oh, is, we just need the work done. And so right. if it, it, it either happens or it doesn't. But I mean, do this you have a top five of these things? I well, mean, the paint money's already been spent. Paint's on the clubhouse right now. We've we've paid for that ourselves. Um, <laughs> and it's on the uh, it's on the dugouts. You can go out there and see it today. It looks a hundred percent better. So you want reimbursed for that as well? We, we yeah. absolutely, okay. absolutely. Um, the electrical work, so what you had there inside the clubhouse was a lot of old rooms. At one time, there was a bathroom in there. It got converted to a storage room. So we store your baseballs, your helmets, your bats, and all that stuff in there. So the doors in time, because of lack of maintenance and this and vandalism and other things, have been kicked in. and this, that, and this. So we need four new solid doors lock the facility roll up, properly the roll up doors well roll up yeah. doors a, a whole other item <laughs> oh, that's that's the doors. equipment interior room doors. where you've got the uh, chalk and you've got the okay. different things that you need to make you know to drag the field and stuff like that that door's been dented in for a long time and you can't even use it can't open it and again now when we met out there robert said he'd get right you know he was going to take care of that so i'm trying to get a figure here sure so and i and <laughs> i so with the estimate we, we were saying up to ten thousand dollars you picked the number but I'm saying you up to ten thousand dollars. We'd like authorization to submit receipts and be a reversed, re we don't reimbursed. We have ten thousand dollars here, ma'am. Only that thirty-eight hundred. If we use the during mark, if we use the the seven hundred dollars from the other place, in with the thirty-one hundred dollars, that's thirty-eight hundred dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So of the list that you said that you went through with Robert, that he said he would do. You know, Robert said he could provide the electrical and he could provide the um, countertops because there was some form of wood countertop that he could provide a um, polyurethane type finish on where you could just wipe it off. So what we did, we went ahead and pulled the old rotten, rat infested stuff out of the little concession stand area and we were just going to replace it with um, newer materials. We're not looking for granite countertops, we're just looking for basic materials that we can serve, you know, a hot dog and a, and a Coke off of that is reasonably clean and sanitary and all that good stuff. We had an ongoing discussion with the city. We felt like that we were going to be able to obtain these funds. It did not sound like a problem at all. There was money in last year's budget, I think, for it. I spoke with Garrett specifically about it, I spoke with Jim specifically about it, and we spoke with the city manager about it. There was there was not an issue. Well, now here we are standing here. So you're saying for this budget, our budget started October 1st. Right. This, right. Has this, been this since was October back in July. 1st. This is so this July. year. This was last yeah. year's budget. Yeah. Well, 2020, it would have been July 1st of 2019, just use that date. But I mean, 20, okay. I guess so it would have been 20. So this, this fiscal right. this year. This past fiscal year. Yeah. 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 I mean, our current fiscal year. No, no, wait. No, 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 no. no. Our past. I'm sorry. Our past. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. So then yeah. once that fiscal year ended, those yeah, funds rolled over. into, yeah, it rolled out. So now we're going off of what we have now. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so we're, we're, we're asking for anything we, we can get. I, I mean, I've spoke to a couple of you individually. I was hoping that we could get at least partial support, maybe full support. But the, the large items on here, I'm more than willing to, to work with Maria or whoever else is in the RPAC mode to try to go and get some dollars for irrigation 
for some sod, for some clay, some different things that need to be done. That being said, there's no reason to do it if we're not going to maintain it. And, and the bottom line is when you go out there and look around, I mean, it kind of yeah. speaks for itself. And I've been out. I've been out there. We, I spent hours out there. I can tell you, it needs a lot of work. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Don't I'm we sure have? I thought that Chris. What is it? Um, River Greens was mowing. Do they not do that anymore? They're mowing. They're just not necessarily doing it how much it needs to be done. Okay, so we have a contract with them. And, and it's not to mention just the mowing. You've also got grass that has now died because right. sprinklers right. were not taken care of adequately. So our pack only works off of city match. Mm -hmm. So if we were to give you these funds, then we would have no funds for a city match for our pack unless we waited for next year. What, like we went the time to get the fence. Yeah, those days are gone. Those that's not. not yeah, good those old, days not are good over. Days. And plus, I, other grants were used with that. There was okay. leverage from other grants that we. So used is there our pack matching money available? Um, there, I, th I believe there is. Um, their fiscal year obviously began the same time, but their rules have changed. But they haven't been put into motion, as far as I know, with the commission. But they're looking at just giving every city just their money, and that's it. How long would know? it take to find out? Um, we a phone we call. won't be able to participate in RPAC until our current RPAC grant is completed. Which is going to be done when? Around, we're February, well, before February. We have part of Dura Martin being installed hopefully the end of December, first part of January. The XO pod at Donaldson Park, we're also hoping for January two lane. We do not have a projected date yet for that equipment to be in. Okay. Why not? So, the playground equipment company hasn't provided that <laughs> so but you could still go to our pack and say that you're going to be going to them next year and this is what you're going to want and they will have kind of not an earmark on it but they may not commit to it but at least they know it's coming mm -hmm. when we, did your we did that at i want to say a meeting the last meeting that we went to we provided a list that the city manager put together dora martin was on it but you were looking at about three to four years out hmm because we're waiting for all of this to get done no because he had other projects that he wanted done be prior to it like what Do uh redoing remember? donaldson park bathrooms donaldson park bathrooms well that, that our bathrooms would be nice you come out there and take a look at those there. <laughs> see, see here, they're pretty yeah Here's yeah those were built I with our pack dollars over the years you name the people that have played there, and, and you're right in what you're saying, and, and, and you're gun ho about this today because I suspect your kids are involved in them. Am I correct? Sure. Okay. When your kids are gone on up, yep. you're going to walk, wow. and, 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 and it'll be right back. It, it's a continual well, thing. Nobody, nobody cares until it's their kids are involved, and this is what we're yeah. going to do. And this well, is what we you're, need. You're, it's well, Stanley, it's, you're, it's, sta you're stating the problem, but not the solution. I do agree with what you're saying, but I think that's just about the case in anything in life, on. if you really think about it. I mean, you, there people are involved when yeah. their time comes along. So, yeah, that, that's a valid well, the, the that's a valid scenario, yeah. but hopefully there's another Chad to come along. And if the, there's yeah, not, guess the what? The fact of the matter is we shouldn't have to have parents that are coming right. here complaining. Right. We, the, yeah. city the city needs to take care of its own like they should, you would never hear from us. we just say thank you. Right. Who's over the recreation department? I mean, who's over the pa the, pa the parks and stuff? Robert. Robert. It's Robert. Okay, so, and you've met with him, and he said yeah, he was going to Yeah, Robert's a nice guy, and I'm not here to no, say no, anything no, no. bad about but Robert. But he's going to work on the electrical part of it, right? Well, said, yes, said he does, and that's another thing. We're on a timeline here because our season starts in January and runs all the way to July, so we need whatever assistance we're going to get, we need fairly quickly if we're not going to get it until – April or May, then we're going to have to make whatever arrangements we have to make to just get something minimally done just so we can start. So, let Dan, me, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> let me, I have, let me go just ahead, say go ahead. one thing. Go ahead. Can we commit uh, to him tonight for the $3,800 that, um, um, that's already allocated? If you choose, yes. Yeah. $3,100. Would that well, there assist was a you all? That, I mean, honestly, yeah, that's much, much better than, than nothing. I mean, if you tell me where you're in for $3,800, then, then we'll do what we can for $3,800. We've obviously and, already and spent. Give us, and and what I'm, what, why I say that is because that will give um, the city manager a, a time to, to come up with a plan for Durham Martin because there's other areas that need assistance as sure, well. Sure, sure. Uh, that, that's my thought now. Mm -hmm. That's just, just my thought. Because he did come here to us. He's asking, and I'm, not only because his kids are there. I don't have any kids in the, any, any of them. Yeah, there, there's probably 200-plus so. kids.
kids from this community involved in that. Yes. And then you, yes. the outreach of that is probably close to a thousand folks when you talk about the extended family. So, yes. Danielle, do you know the um, on the RPAC application? Does it accept in-kind donation as part of the match? It does, doesn't it? Isn't there a believe so? Okay, all so all the labor could be used for that. Right. So all the labor that you guys have put together in the future, whatever you're doing now, all those dollars and I think it's what, fifteen dollars an hour is what they, okay. they tab as a in kind hour donation of work. Keep future checking. work that you guys would have I believe is applicable towards the RPAC match. So okay. if you guys have already spent a, a gob of money, you know, volunteer wise, that mm -hmm. doesn't apply because it, it's not retroactive. Mm -hmm. But in the future, if when you, we know that we will be applying for an RPAC grant, then we need to know what the, this right here will be perfect gauge because mm -hmm. you know how much time you've allocated for certain things. We can use those dollars as in kind, okay. that time. So, you know, whether it's the kids or the adults, it, it's in kind. And even if you contributed your own dollars, that's also in kind. You would just have to validate that with some kind of voucher or some kind of receipt or something. So just check. thinking ahead, let's check. think ahead of that, right? So that next year when we work on our budget, we can do a, a, a stronger program of how we're gonna attack this maintenance along with the other parks as well, the other, other fields. But in this year, I don't know if Danielle has the ability to go in there and look at our current budget and see, cause I know that you found some fluff we know that. So is there any other stuff in there that can be found in the budget that we can look at and say, okay, we may have a little bit more here than we thought, other than the 38? Possibly. But then I, again, we did, we did commit to the, the new basketball court that was from the fluff money down, that uh, Jim wanted. So that's, that's I must have missed that meeting. No, okay. did yes. I? No, we did. Remember we, the here at the yes. park at the park on Main Street. Yes, the okay. new one. Since the new budget, the standalone bathroom. We, yeah, That's there's a, a the membership is you know you pay to play so to speak. I think we're seventy or seventy five dollars for the younger age group, and I think ninety five dollars for the uh, thirteen fourteen. Year How much old. of that is is can you kick back into? Doing Most of that is just cost of doing business. By the time you buy your shirts, by the time you buy your baseballs, bats, equipment, there's not there's a bunch there. left. I mean, it's just there's just it's not a money making business. The idea is a youth recreation league. You put in and take in and put out. And and if it wasn't for volunteer support and labor, then obviously it wouldn't work at all. And some ideas so, I know I know I know you may have already done this. Have you talked to Ronnie Jackson? Any? Ronnie's uh, pretty aware of the situation. I think yes, sir. You know he built that big clubhouse you probably played some out of it I don't think you got a dime of city money to do that mm -hmm. so that, that's that's something you might ask him what his model was okay. that'll help you a lot okay okay well, so we, what are we, we, doing? we I mean we get some donations don't get me wrong I mean we go around and, and ask different businesses and, and for like you know for the all-stars in the summer and stuff like that we do t-shirts and all kinds of stuff barbecue fundraisers this is specifically relating to the city complex. We're not buying baseballs. We're not buying yeah. bats. We're not traveling to, you know, Tallahassee for a tournament. This is a city-owned complex that we're asking the city to participate in the maintenance. We're willing to do the labor. Right. And we thank you for it. It sounds to me like tonight we have $3,800 worth to play with. So you'll submit your, your receipts? Uh, I can bring receipts. Uh, yeah, we, that's, we just need reimbursement. We'll bring receipts for every dollar. And, and Danielle, all, all four of those field Dixie Youth Field? All something? four of those fields are di – well, we play in a Dixie Youth League. I guess you could call the fourth field a uh, Dixie – I don't know, maybe they call it Dixie Boys. But, um, there's but no way I don't softball play down there. There's not supposed to be. That'd be something else. would be awesome if if y'all would help police that a little better. Um, but <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm in, I'm in yeah, for whatever you want to do. Here yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're never going to have the fields like you want as long as that goes on. Amen. But uh, there's some technicalities there as to locking the gates and stuff like that. If you tell me we can lock them, let's lock them. And then all of a sudden they know we have access were locked. to them. No, they're not locked. I will tell you that when Robert and I met him out there, um, what they've done just with paint is yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. What they what they've the done. The floor and the clubhouse and the dugouts are very very nice. Okay. Okay. Well, I'd be willing to support a motion for the thirty-eight hundred dollars. I make a motion that we allocate thirty-eight hundred dollars towards Avon Park Youth Baseball. I'll second it. Thank you. And I okay. I'll make an, another comment afterwards. We have a motion and a second. Comments? I'm just going to say that when our budget season begins, which will be relatively soon, 
Mm -hmm. um, that you come okay. to our budget hearings and you know come and say what it is that your community needs in in that area I mean I don't play baseball so you know what's out there is only what I see when I drive by unless I hear from you guys then we don't know that's right sure. when, t tell me a date for the budget or oh it's going to be a long drawn-out process between <laughs> May and October 1st when, when would be a good time September. to show up <laughs> uh, yeah probably June or July but okay. the thing to do is to start getting your ducks in a row sure. now and submit it now sure I mean we're we just started our new budget spending but the new one for 2020 yeah. 21 is the one you're looking at yeah and then we start that sometime in May okay because that makes a big difference to me Sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we again, not to cry over spilt milk, but we had, we were kind of ahead of the game. Some personnel changes changed our scenario. Okay. Yep. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? And other discussion was to see whether or not, Danielle, if you look at the budget and kind of see what has been allocated to the extent of excess. Some of those uh, estimates that had zero zeros at the end of them, perhaps just take a better look at that and talk to the different departments and see if the, any of those were had any in type of inflation attached to them. Okay. We Hi. have a question. Susan Roberts again, 2834 Palo Verde Drive. Um, the receipts, who would I need to submit them to? I'm the treasurer. Oh, Kim Gay. Danielle yeah. Blackswater. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And where are you located? City Hall, upstairs. Upstairs City Hall. And bring your 501c3 designation for them as well. They're going yes. to need that. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. One, one final question. I know you haven't voted yet, but it is, as we submit receipts fairly quickly there, then reimbursement occurs within two weeks or so. Is that how I understood it works? or Roughly, depending okay. on when you turn them in. Cool. All right. We'll okay. probably see you shortly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Meeting. Hopefully. So we have okay, a, I never know. We have a motion and a second. Anything further? We'll call the roll. Councilmember Gray? Yes. Councilmember Spurlock? Yes. <clears throat> Councilmember Sutherland? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Thank Motion you. Motion unanimous. Thanks, Chad. And just as a side note there, um, I have in my binder here the insurance payments from Hurricane Irma. And we still have, as far as I know, several hundred thousands of dollars um, that are going to be attached to particular buildings that have not been repaired or won't be repaired. Um, I would hope that, you know, this money right here is looked at and still tallied somewhere and it's not part of our budget, but it's part of this, right? Mm -hmm. So in looking at this, I just would like to know at some point in the future, if we've completed all of the expenditures for the airport hangars, what has been drawn down to zero and what's not a zero can go towards repairs of that. It's on airport property. Different okay. fund though. Hmm? Different fund. Airport property, though, and some of these were hangars. It's airport property. Does it not apply? No. <clears throat> okay, y'all discuss the, that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. okay. the park is not is on airport property, but does not pay towards the airport. Doesn't matter. Then, it, then something's wrong. We All right, we, we need to call the roll on this. We did. We did. We did. We did. We did. Okay, sorry. Good. I'm glad I'm the only one that has that. All right, moving on. We've got item number 15, Alvin Henson Code Enforcement Fine Reduction. So we asked at our last meeting that we find out what the hard costs are. Staff has produced that for us. I see a figure here for reduced daily fine to 2%, which comes out to $683.50. The Hensons are here, so we can talk to them. What kind of questions do we have for staff and or Mr. Henson? I don't think we have questions for him. I think we should let him know what the um, what he's expected to pay okay. if we. Um, so we have to make a motion and all that for yeah. for it to be finalized. So at this point, uh, basically going in line with what we've done in the past, um, they've reduced the fine from thirty-two thousand seven thirty-two thousand some odd dollars. Let's see, seven hundred thirty-two thousand seven hundred to two percent of that plus the hard cost, which comes out to six hundred eighty-three dollars and fifty cents. So that's what the proposal is at this point. So do you have any questions on that? No. Okay. Do we have anyone willing to make a motion to that, or do we have any further discussion on it? Uh, have you come into compliance with the property? Yes. It's all compliant? The, yes. the judge yes. magistrate's yes. happy in, uh, in everything with you guys? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Just uh, make sure that in your motion you include the fact that the money needs to be paid before the lien is released. Right. Okay. 
I move that we, are you ready for motion? Yes. I move that we um, reduce uh, Mr. Henson's um, fines to $683.50 and that the funds must be paid before the liens are removed. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? So that can be paid in increments or all at once, right? What they usually do is put it, it on, the, yeah, it's, on the water it's bill. Already, it's already, <coughs> no, it's not no? going on the water bill. It's already billed. Okay. We just have to reduce the daily fine down to be equivalent to the $654. Um, he can make payments on it. And once the balance goes to zero, we can release. Okay. Right. And would there be um, a certain time limit it must be paid in? Cause it can't, it can't, it can't. Yeah, we need it's, it's for 10 already, years. The lien's already recorded on the property. It's not going to go anywhere until we release it. So, I right. mean, it, it could take him however long to. But we need to set a yeah, limit. We don't want it to go that to 10 go. years. Yeah. Well, how, Do um, we have that choice or is it up to him? Pay it all at one time? Well, he I, I guess that. ask him how he. How Sir, he what length of time it? do you uh, think it'll take you to pay the $683? 600 $683. How long do you think you need to pay that? If you had um, 600, if you if you did an addition, I don't know what your income is. It's uh, eight, eight some. Well, okay, I'm not asking you. Oh, oh. <laughs> don't tell me. But if you did uh, in, in one year, could you pay an additional 56 or 57 dollars a month? Yeah. To get it, and, it, and it fifty-seven dollars a month in tw in twelve months, it'll be paid, wouldn't it? Yeah, but I don't think we should impose that rule on him because oh, okay. if he makes a mistake or gets sick and isn't able yeah. to do it, it'll be thirteen months. So you know, do we have to give him a time limit to do this, or is it up to him? The lien's on his house. It, it, the lien's not going to come off until it's yeah. paid. Well, okay. what, what's to prevent it from going on forever? Yeah. Nothing. You know, Nothing. You, you got to have a, a time. I mean, well, even, even if you make it three years, at least just put a time on it. Jeez. But are we are we allowed to impose that? I guess is my question. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Impose. Are we allowed to impose frame. a time yeah. frame for him to as pay? As part of the deal. Well, Otherwise, yeah, the fine the goes back to the original. But yeah. I mean, is there a statute that says that we can or it can't? Says it's part no, of it's not, nothing that says you, you can't do it. Um, you, know, you don't need one to say that you can. But the, um, um, I mean, you have to, you, I mean, Reasonably speaking, you should have some kind of a time frame, in my in my opinion. So, is a year okay with you, or do you need more time? About two years. Two years. Yeah, about yeah, like two years. And that would be about thirty dollars a month. Okay. That sounds yeah. good. About two and that years. way, you won't be rushing yourself. Yeah. Okay. You, you should have some kind of an agreement, whereby. Like a written agreement or a motion? Yeah. yeah. Don't yeah. they usually do that, though? When they agree to pay something, they have some type of a contract they sign, say they're going to pay so much a month? I think on their yeah, utility bills, that. yeah, we can yeah. probably get something like that yeah. drawn up for him. And it, and it should be, you know, at some yeah, point that if it stops payment, you know, just abandon the amount of money that it, it just went to the lien exactly. as opposed to releasing the lien. Yeah. You know, I mean, there has to be some kind of a well, B, B does that so we can get with her and have her yeah. drop something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Time frame. yeah. But, Mr. Henson, you do understand that you can't sell your property or no. anything while that yes. lien's on yes. it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because it, nobody yeah. will buy it. So. Okay. Okay. okay, so, so we'll, do get we, it, we'll get an agreement. Do we need us. any further action? The motion is going to be amended to put a time limit of two years? Yes. Okay. Amended. Is there any further? And question? to have it start the date that he signs. Okay. Yes. Well, no, I just have my same objection I made the last meeting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is there any further questions? The objection was that he uh, that if you lower the fine, then what is to stop everyone from oh. just simply allowing fines to accrue because they know they'll be lowered? On what well, basis are you going to deny anybody coming in here asking? Well, how about two years? No, I'm talking no. about the initial reduction period. Oh, but I mean we've had the reduction in in place all this time. I mean, Mr. The goal is compliance. I mean, I don't want to make thirty two thousand dollars off of him. I don't. Well, I, simply I agree. Tell I don't want to force somebody out of their house if you can't. I'm just simply saying. What's the incentive? What's well, the incentive it comes when, down to this. What's the incentive of anybody even doing code enforcement? I mean, you know, why pay attention to it? 
Yeah, but I think that he is in good faith here tonight, and yeah. I think in good faith we're helping him out in two years is ample time, and anyone else coming in, as long as they're compliant. His first answer that I asked was, are you compliant with code enforcement? He said yes. Right. You do realize that if you start, if there's another violation on code enforcement, you might have to start a whole nother process yes, of, yeah. of cleanup and come back in front of us again, and we may not be that nice the next oh, time. Uh, the charges would be doubled. Yeah. yeah. For a second. For yeah, a you don't want yeah. that. So no. let's stick to the rules and do it for two years. Okay. And okay. Mr. Henson, come in to City Hall tomorrow afternoon and uh, meet with us upstairs, and we will get um, that drawn up for you for your signature, okay, your payment plan. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank okay. you all. All right, we have a motion and a second. We'll call the roll. Councilmember Gray? Yes. Councilmember Spurlock? Yes. Councilmember Sutherland? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Unanimous. Item number 16, letter of transmittal. Danielle? Uh, this is the same contract that was brought before you last meeting with the corrections and, and additions that Jerry had added. Okay. Um, this is going up for approval for the taxiway fox shot project okay do we have a motion on this anyone willing to make a motion yeah yeah i make a motion that we approve the um contract with dickerson florida oh, yeah. inc okay <laughs> do we have a second second we have a motion and a second any further discussion Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilmember Gray? Yes. Councilmember Spurlock? Yes. Councilmember Sutherland? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Unanimous? All right, we have item number 17, FBO Office Space Rental Agreement. Danielle, it's you again. Okay, we had somebody come in with a proposal. Um, his name is Eddie Hill. Um, he used to work for Ben Hill Griffin. Um, he is looking to rent the front office space, the rental car space, um, for to, to do aircraft sales. Um, he normally operates out of his home. Um, he's wanting to, to move it here so he has more space and more interaction with actual customers. There's hardly any space in that little sliver. All he needs is a desk, a computer, and a filing cabinet. Okay. 75 square feet, apparently. Yes, it's tiny. <laughs> He's also looking to bring in a no small um, flight school that he would want to occupy, occupy the office space behind it. Um, but he needs that. some time to get that put together oh, and no. organized. $75 per month on page number 2 of 14. Yes, we charge a dollar a square foot for office space in the terminal Same building. Same thing, we charge nonprofits? Yes, ma'am. Non the only difference is he's going to pay sales tax. You didn't. Huh? I said he's going to pay sales tax for that use versus um, nonprofits don't. He's for profit. Yeah. Okay. At, at one point, um, we need to look at the square footage because I know that those rates were based off of 2000 and. 14. Not, uh, who knows what, and I don't even think it went up then. But, I mean, are those reasonable rates per square foot at this point? I mean, they're getting a lot of goodies in there for next to for, nothing rent. For the terminal building, I would say yes. Um, for the T hanger rates, not so much. I believe those need to be reevaluated. Okay. I, I think that we need to reevaluate the airport property. I mean, the, the terminal building itself, though, because, I mean, they get Wi Fi, bathroom. Electric living room water. electric water they get everything for one dollar and mm -hmm. there's you know go anywhere on on main street and find something for one dollar sure. a square foot but so does the public that just walks in the door hmm so does the public that just walks in the door and sits in our conference room but they don't stay there they don't do their business there i i, I do have people that go in, in to do seat. business in our conference room mm -hmm. are they yeah, aviation they related yes ma'am I think that needs to be looked at. Yeah, uh, I mean, I like the idea of the flight school, you know. Mm -hmm. We need to get as much business as possible in there. Yeah, but, you know, you can go anywhere in the county and any lawyer will lease you their boardroom for a mediation for a price. And people shop for that. So, I mean, I would not have a problem designating $25 to, to use our, our boardroom. We have to clean it. We have to maintain it. Everything. 
You're talking about just for somebody that flies in to go in there. Well, if they're conducting business, you know, if they want the use of it, then, you know, there, there should be a fee attached, just like we attach a fee to our pavilions for someone to have a birthday party. We, we do have an option if we go into this contract um, to when we renew, if we renew, we can increase the pricing. Um, we do have option just like on our, our tea hanger agreements where we can um, adjust the price with the um, appropriate notice. Can you check with other airports and see what they do with their boardrooms? And see whether or not they lease them out per hour, per space, per day, or is there a waiting list? Yeah, I can. No, 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 no. We're, I know I got sidetracked. I got sidetracked with the board. Yeah, I'm, I, sorry. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just I'm think sorry. the uh, the philosophy should be to fill it up first and then weed out later. And we've been Beggars looking for aviation-related <laughs> business to go in the terminal building. I'm sorry? I said we've been looking for aviation-related business to go into the terminal building, and an right. opportunity came in. We need to be as friendly as possible to any business that wants what to come. What is the rate for this room? $75 a month for 75 square feet. It's a dollar a square foot, Stanley. Yep. Stanley's $5 a month. For good. 75 square feet. Yeah. $1 per square foot. Which is the same rate that's charged to, you said there's some other businesses in there? Every business that's in the terminal building charges a dollar a square foot. Got it. And has been in there. Well, no other business is in there, right? Four wins is. That, but they're, they're a trade off, aren't they? They are, but their rate is still calculated at a dollar a square foot that's in trade for services. Right. Okay. We can look at rates in the future, but. Uh, and this you know, is for how long? One year? Yes, we did yeah. a one-year term. He won't have any overnight parking or anything like that? No. He lives here in Avon Park. Okay. Anyone willing to make a motion on it? Oh, motion to approve the rental agreement with Eddie Hill and um, Sun Air Aircraft Sales. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilmember Gray? Yes. Councilmember Spurlock? Yes. Councilmember Sutherland? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Unanimous. Thank you. Item number 18, revised job description, Director of Finance, set pay range. This is um, the uh, job description that we've brought to you in the past and um, there was a couple of changes that council wanted um, before we before you were willing to set the pay range so those changes have taken place we removed the part that says um, that the required education um, could be equivalent to um, different types of training stuff we removed that and was there anything else Oh, and the, and the driver's license, we changed it because it said Florida driver's license, and we just changed it to valid driver's license because if somebody's just coming in, and they might take a little bit of time to get their um, Florida driver's license. Okay. Any discussion on this? I just have a concern that, you know, we're going to hire a city manager pretty soon, and that individual may have some deficiencies that they would be looking for in their finance director and um, there's nothing in here about CRAs or being familiar you know with that um, not all city governments have that I'm sure that they would be able to learn that you uh, this was was this done at the last council meeting that you guys wanted this change or yeah See, and I wasn't here and I apologize we, we, for that we but pushed it to this one more yeah. or less so that you could also be involved I okay well I mean so you're looking for a final response tonight so you can start advertising right well that's what we're looking for but it's entirely up to council I mean if you want us to wait we you know we what was the dollar it. attached to this what was we're the, supposed uh, to be setting you that. have to set the pay range okay so the only thing I would say is if you don't want to put it out, you know, that's fine. However, in with the previous uh, administration, we ran into issues with the pay range. So I think it would be wise for us to go ahead and oh, set that absolutely. pay range. The pay range is fine I with agree. me. I just think that it says when you say bachelor's degree required in accounting or related field, related field could mean anything. I would, <laughs> I would expect a, an accounting degree period if you're going to be paying anyone anything over $70,000. Um, 
CPA preferred, you know, I would think that CPA would be something that is uh, a, a given. So CPR required. Yeah. But, you know, again, whoever we hire as our city manager it may be a CPA. So they may not look for the things in this job description that would suit that individual because it would be a duplication of talent, perhaps. Mm -hmm. yeah. But to me, a city manager might want to change some things in here only based off of what they're experienced with and what they're looking for in their finance director. And that's where we will not know everything about it because this isn't global enough to cover the whole thing. Where's payroll? Uh, I, under, I understand we that. We have to set uh, that standard. I think you make a mistake not setting your, your uh, job description based on what you need for that position, um, regardless of what the city manager does. Because uh, no, I mean, I, if, you, if you then hire somebody who's going to accommodate the city manager, what are you going to do if that city manager leaves and they don't have that expertise? No, anymore? and I agree with you there. I'm just saying, for example, you know, there's, for example, CRA. It's not mentioned in here. Do we need to add it in here, or is there an assumption that any CPA with government experience would know that? You know. I, no. I think that if they're a CPA, they should either know it, or they're either, or they're going to learn it rather quickly. So a CPA means that they're master's degreed. I. You know, a, a bachelor's degree typically isn't. I, I mean, will. Is there, you don't get bachelor's with a CPA. It's a master's. That's what your CPA is. I will say that um, given the um, applications and resumes that we've gotten from the um, positions that we have advertised already, that there will be people that probably will meet any need out there at some point in some of the resumes and applications that come in because we've we get we've gotten people with just a wide array of stuff we've gotten people who are totally unqualified and we've got people who are you know way above the scale of qualifications so yeah you know, that might be something to think about too M my personal opinion is to set the bar high and yeah. advertise it yeah and if we have <coughs> some superstars that apply for the price range that we want then why would the next city manager not want to go ahead and pick them should now, payroll be in this well, payroll, payroll duties, you mean? Will be HR, I think, won't it? I'm sorry. Will payroll be HR? I'm seeing a nod. Yes. All right. Well, so don't be familiar with it anymore. there was a question yeah. with our prior um, CPA with HR with unf HR. unfamiliarity HR. with um, CRAs. Not just that, but very unfamiliar with union pension contributions and those types of projections. And I'd like to add that in here. Well, and I was going to say I thought that the um, adding the uh, familiarity with CRAs would probably be a good idea. So that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Union. I union. mean, did you add that in your? I, I haven't. No, I, I don't know what was added in or no, not. No, I didn't. But because okay. when you brought it up, I thought it was a good idea. But I think the union negotiation part of it, or union part of it. Projections, be yeah, because there's a report that's put out for the um, unions in order for them to submit for their pension stuff. But anyway, that would definitely be uh, an item that I, that I would hope would be looked at because otherwise they're going to have to farm it out. Yeah, and what we can do, we can add those things in. And if you guys want to set the pay range and you do want us to put it out for advertising, we can send these to you individually or this to you individually, let you say yay or nay or, wh or whatever, and then we can move forward or we can right. just you hold off. Until, that. Huh? You can't do that. That's polling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So could you put in here then uh, familiarity? What statute is it? CRAs? Is it 163? What? CRAs? What's their statute? Under 163. So familiarity with Florida Statute 163 as well as Florida Statute 119? Right. There's, there's a lot under 163. Well, yeah, but CRAs. I think CRAs. Okay. They'll, they'll, if, if they know anything about CRAs, they're going to know what a CRA is. Yeah. Okay. okay. And because it's a government position, then I would hope that they would be familiar with FS119, but I think that that would be helpful to have in there as well. Okay. And if you're missing anything, you can add the other job duties as assigned. Oh, yeah. It's in everybody else's <laughs> job description. Other duties as assigned? Well, <laughs> covers everything you're missing. Yeah, but those are big. Yeah. Those are big elements. Okay, that you so just you can't. Want us to uh, go oh, you're going to do this. No, I mean, they have to have this a familiar. And then just bring it back to the next meeting. Yeah. And you want to set it. the pay range then? Well, what I'd like to do, I mean, me, could we do a comparison of what the local um, CPAs are, are making via county 
Sebring. I don't know if they have a director or if they have a coordinator. So I mean, it's it's not com comparable, but the four league cities might have a, yeah. might have a um, um, information on that too. They do it a. a um, uh, a survey every year and they probably have something for that position okay 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 so we just we'll do that bring it back yep okay anything else on that okay moving on to item number 19 proposed job description human resources yes this one is um We've done this one according to um, what we had previously, and um, the pay range has already been set um, because you had set the pay range um, when Brenda was here. Uh, Brenda is, I'm sure everyone knows that Brenda is no longer here. And um, so we can also put this out um, ahead of time for a manager, or we can hold off on this as well or if there's any changes that, that you want made. Um, right now, we're interviewing um, for somebody temporary part-time um, in human resources until the new manager gets here, just because we need the help. Are they gonna so. be a city employee or are they gonna be through the through a people finders type? The, the um, staffing place was actually going to charge us about $12 more an hour mm -hmm. for a person than what we were really wanting to pay. So I put it out there on Indeed for part-time and temporary and we've received about 12 um, prospects and they're aware that it's part-time and temporary. Um, a couple of them have asked if it would go um, full time and I've told them that that's just not anything that we're promising that right now it is temporary and it is part time mm -hmm. and that would be what what the job is and we're getting some you know, some good prospects with that so it would actually be cheaper for us to go that way because they would get no benefits that's and cool. uh, they know that when a new manager comes on um, they may not stay or they may decide to keep them so so in regards to the hr risk manager position um, there were a lot of functions that were being done in different departments that were truly human resource related mm -hmm. and particularly some of the items were being done by the accounting firm at mm -hmm. 75 dollars an hour which defeated the purpose of right having this position so are those job elements being put back into this <coughs> HR position well not for the part-time one for the um, but I mean but that's what this right right for, for the is permanent for the full -time. one yes for yeah. the permanent one yes because we do want to get human resources doing the payroll and benefits um, this, this is the job description that was put out last year when we looked for uh, human resources and so it does cover the um, payroll <coughs> payroll yes but the person that we that we had <coughs> wouldn't do payroll. The temp so. person that we bring in won't do. And the so you're still going to be paying Wix Brown. Is it Wix Brown and Williams that are doing it? <coughs> yes. So, but they also have to have their own other thing that they do, right? There's still something else. They do two functions: payroll and something else. Uh, they do the basic accounting, okay. reconciliation, and everything for the okay. and auditing. So the that part basis. of what we're paying them right now will go away when the new director gets hired for it'll, the it'll drop. Director they always finance. had an, a portion of the payroll function. They were always on the back half. They always did the checks and balances to make sure that the employee that was doing the entering was entering the correct information that's on the piece of paper. So who's going to be entering? So what you're saying is that the HR person will still be entering, but you still need the backup, the segregation thing, where they have to do yes, their backup. Yes, that's per okay. the checks and balance, yeah. All right, so that's been put back into this job description. Yes. All right, now this job description is for a manager, not a director. This was the original job that was So then out. we don't need to look at it because it's not a director position. Right. It's human resources risk manager, but we wanted to give you the opportunity okay. to still tweak it if you want. So Well, it's a um, this is another one of those that when a it, to me the finance director would be looking at this because they would end up having to double check some things as well because at the end of the day they're the ones that do the final sign off on the reporting. Um, I don't think I, I, I appreciate you bringing this. I think it, it is a manager position. I don't think we need a director for this position, but 
you know, that's something that when the next city manager comes on board, we'll have to decide, I guess. But for me, it's, as long as it's a manager and it covers all the functions of an HR human resource manager slash risk, then we don't need to approve it. I, 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 I'm fine with it. I still think it needs to have in here um, familiarity with city operations you know, government operations, not just an HR person, um, and someone that has familiarity with unions and contracts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's some of the questions that are being asked in the interviews, so. And, uh, but is it part of the job description? Is that, are those in here? I mean, I've read most of it, but, you know. Mm -mm. I wanna say yes. The, gover the, the government part of it, I think the union negotiations is in here. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily negotiations, but know how to read a contract yeah. that affects payroll and that affects right. the HR department. We have two unions and if they don't read the contracts, then they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, number eight. Number eight. But yes, they're, they're um, I don't know if the government no, part in, is in here, but we can look at that and make sure that that's in here. I, I know that um, there's a couple of um, people right now that have government experience, um, union experience, and a couple of really, really good candidates right now. Um, one of them I know would be interested in becoming full-time if the new manager yeah, right wants here, them two, and um, I mean we don't know we don't know these people or anything but I mean mm -hmm. we have a couple of really good prospects so mm -hmm. that maybe the the new city manager would even want to keep them but they do know that they may not be kept so I would you know if you could just change one thing mm -hmm. um, where it says collective bargaining agreements I think that a lot of people just assume that they it, it's just an agreement Okay. If they don't know a, that collective bargaining means a union, then they can say that I can do all these things and they won't know. I, th I still think that the word union needs to be in there. Okay. Union agreements. And um, one other thing, on, in terms of the application form itself, it seems that it's been morphed several times. Um, why can't we not have an application that says years completed and level of education on it rather than do you have and people just put an arbitrary number in there that cannot be verified years completed of uh, when you talk about college or education or whatnot and if level it's a two of year, education. yes okay. no it just says years completed I, I i could do two years worth of electives and say i have two years of college so you know Okay. Yeah, it's true. So, and they wouldn't be lying, would they? No. So, if it says A A B A or A S, whatever that you know, level completed. And by the way, one thing that the county does that I think is awesome is they have to have proof of their education re of, that they're saying that they have. Um, if they don't provide that, then you don't accept the uh, the application. You know, it's on the employee or prospective employee to submit their their um, transcripts. Okay. Anything else? Other than that, I mean, it, you know, you can talk about it. And then the other thing also was there's a question that's been removed from the uh, employee uh, application. And are you related to anyone in the city or something like that? That's been removed and that needs to be put back in. Related to anyone that works at the city, you're saying? Mm -hmm. Anyone applying for a job. Mm. Do you have any relatives working here or something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Conflict of interest. Right. I think and those we, were two. We are, and we are making sure that that's not happening as best we can. So it's a well, it's a totally different regime. So I, I would expect that. So <laughs> anyway, I just want to eliminate all potential perception mm -hmm. of um, employee. You know. Yep. Anything else? Okay, we need to take a break for a moment to change the CD. Okay, five minutes. Okay. We only have one more thing to do, too. We got three more things. 